Hi, everybody. Welcome to Coach Menachem with us tonight, Sunday night, January 15th. Appreciate you coming. Tonight is sheer 128. Rabbi Shleimer, 128. And uh, again, I always thank everybody for coming every week and for participating and joining. And a special thank you to the people that... Um, special thank you. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay, thank you for joining. And uh, I always, um, yeah, it's recording. It's just, no, not from the, the thing says it's full. You didn't clear it out. So it's recording it, but you have to clear up the backup. <laughs> just letting you know. And um, I thank always the, the viewers for every week for uh, posting it and letting people know about it. And I see there's on tons of statuses this week. I even had one of my one of my neighbors left me a funny uh, quote about, uh, oh, she is so relentless. Every week you post it. Yes, for Hashem, for two and a half years, I've been sending it out. So again, to share for everybody for posting it and putting it out again and tonight is a secret chaverim to talk and to get some clarity and to see what we're missing. I still don't know what I'm missing. I know I'm missing a lot of things, but let's see specifically what Shlomo is talking about. And thank you for joining. Again, if anybody wants to join the WhatsApp every Sunday, I can send you the, the links. WhatsApp me at 848-525-0066. Again, the number is 848-525-0066. And uh, I'll send you every Sunday the information. If you want to go to menachembarenfeld.com, you can sign up to get the emails. Every week he emails the shear and he emails the replays. And uh, please sign up if you're ready to get every email. Again, anybody who's watching the, the replay of this on YouTube, you can click on the like button. Uh, so me and Menachem can get a tremendous amount of likes and all the money that comes with it. You can click on the subscribe button. And every every Monday morning when Menachem uploads the shear, you could uh, get a ding. And you can know all the shear I'm going to put up there. Baruch Hashem. And we really appreciate it. Again, uh, thank you to all the advertising sponsors at Lakewood School for promoting here in Lakewood. Ellie and Ariel from Five Town Central. And special thank you to Chayla Kaplan and Shmuel Summer from JCN for voting on all the Jewish digital platforms. Again, if anybody's here for the first time, every Sunday night at 9.30, we do this year. We have different abonim, different therapists, different topics. And uh, we're so glad to have Rabbi Shlomi Schwarzman here, Big Grove in Tom's River. He used to be a neighbor of mine. And another surprise trivia, Rabbi Shlomi Schwarzman is one of the Masadrim, one of the, I don't know if it's Masadrim, one of the Masadrim, one of the, one of the what? Masadrim. One of the maschilim of Coach Menachem when we started the program, which was more of a neighborhood uh, program. We started off first. The first was Mordechai Weinberger, and we did it as a one-time thing. And then Shlomo then was our neighbor, and we asked him to come on, and he came on. He was the, the, the second slash third chair, and uh, that was many, many years ago. We have the flyer still. Well, maybe we'll send it out with the replay, but it was cute. And uh, now he's back here, and we're very happy he's here, and Shlomo will get into it. And um, again, tonight... Um, so okay, next Sunday, January 22nd, I'm going to have an amazing share. It was supposed to be Rabbi Kalish this week, but uh, he was in Australia, he came back late, so he switched it. Rosh was so courteous to switch it from last week to this week. So, next week, Rabbi Daniel Kalish from Waterbury, which is uh, I'd say probably one of the good from today. So, uh, I don't know what the topic is, I don't think Rabbi Kalish needs a topic, he's just going to come on and you know, blow it out of the park. So, try to get on early. So, it's maxes out, so if he can't get on. Listen to the replay. So hopefully to see everybody next week. It's uh every Kedush is a chizik for everybody. So it's, it's definitely a share for everybody, whatever the topic is. Tonight's shear is shear 128. Arnaich, I'm gonna unmute you and tell everybody what the gematria of 128 is. Arnaich, unmute. <laughs> 128 is the gematria Oida Hashem Bechol Levov. Before we before we realize what we're missing in our lives, we have to praise Hashem with our whole heart to realize what we have, and we can connect to Hashem with what we have, and we can go forward to connect to the things that we feel that are missing. Beautiful. And now we're going to open up first with Coach Menachem. Coach Menachem, what are we missing in our lives? Why are we here tonight? Isn't it football tonight? Why should we, like, what are we here tonight? Tom, Tom, what's the best to do? Beautiful. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone, to another Sheer. Let's get real with Coach Menachem. It is a big host to have with us, Rabbi Shlomo Schwartzberg. Like we heard from the beginning, two and a half years, Baruch Hashem. And it is very exciting. And it's a time to uh, reflect, stop for a moment and see, Baruch Hashem, where we were when we started, where are we now. And um, the, the feedback that we get, Baruch Hashem, we've put many topics on the table since we started. And so many of them are not easy to talk about, but very, very needed. So Baruch Hashem, we've had from all different miktoyas, Shalom Bayes, 
self-help, whatever it was, Baruch Hashem. And uh, the feedback that we got is really, really amazing. Then there are those who, you know, they send me feedback that they started therapy or whether they found the rough to talk to, they started the process. They never knew that there are other, other people have the same issue that they're going through. Never knew that there's somebody out there that actually deals with this, which is amazing just by letting people know, opening it up, letting some fresh air so that they can see, wait a second, first of all, it's not only me. And there's somebody out there who deals with this and we can reach out, we can get the help and to know what's the next step. But there are those who, after listening to all this year, 128 would say, well, you know, the truth is there's a lot of information and it's really, really amazing, but they don't feel that it has done anything to them. They're, they still feel that they're in the same place and um, they don't see that they, they would, they're waiting for their situation to change, whether it's their spouse, the kids, the the environment the kind of system they're waiting for everything to change and it's not happening and they would say Menachem you know you you, you do a great job but I'm waiting <laughs> so I think I think tonight we're going to be talking about about uh, that idea of I, for those who know Rabbi Schwartzberg and with with sitting with him for many hours um, I know, and many know, that he <coughs> has one thing that he breathes and one thing that he lives for that's called the self-project, which we're going to hear tonight. And I always like to push him and say, what exactly is the self? I mean, don't we know, you know, everybody knows who they are. What are you going to tell us about ourselves? So it's really exciting to hear, Baksham, we have this first to have you here tonight. And Mr. Uh, Shem, we should be able to grow. Everybody should be able to hear what they need to hear in a safe place to slowly get to understand what, what exactly it means, what exactly am I looking for, like, like the title, that key. Hopefully we'll be able to walk away with, with that key that's going to help us to grow and to change, to make those changes. Amit Sashem. Beautiful opening. So again, tonight, Shir, we, we, we title it, The Secret to What's Missing in Our Lives. How to be more successful with Achinach Habonim, Shalom Bayis, and Avodas Hashem. Tonight, here we're going to learn the schus of Coach Menachem's father-in-law, that Moshe ben David Yehuda should be a schus for all the hundreds of people that are here tonight, from the thousands of people that will listen to the shir. Should be a schus for the neshama. Should have a lot of nachas from the, from, from from his idem, and uh, for all the chizik he's giving to Israel. I'm going to read Rav Shlomo Schwartzwig's bio, and then Rav Shlomo, the floor is yours. Okay. okay. Bio. Rav Shlomo Schwartzwig is the rav. Of the Grand River Stiebel and Tom's River, and is the Magachir of the world renowned Daf Achaim and all learning and all Daf learning sites. He's well known for his inspiring lectures, intimate understanding of human psyche, and his crystal clarity communication on deep ideas. His unique blend of wisdom weaves an incredible ta ta tapestry of religion, spirituality, philosophy, psychology, trending social topics, and more. He gives many popular daily shirim online, including the Daf or Torah Anytime, Rambam, Taisus. He currently works on psychotherapy in private practice and is working hard on increasing emotional intelligence in our communities. And Rabbi Shlomo, before you start, just have to give you a message. Uh, Rabbi Friedman, Pinky Friedman's father, I don't know his first name. So I met him on Shabbos. He's the one who does all the artwork. And everything with he said he has one question for Shlomo Schwartzberg. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the question. And you can do whatever you want with it. He said, he wants to know how do you cram so much into one day between all your shiurim and your daf and a rav and a therapist. How do you cram everything? You make every day like 72 hours. He wants to know how you do that and then give us an opening and why are we all here tonight? You have hundreds of people here for you. Why? The floor is yours. So, so first of all, thank you, Ushi. Thank you, Menachem. Thank you, Aranoia. Thank you for the whole Coach Menachem team. Really, I, I, I can't imagine two and a half years ago that I would be saying that, you know, I know... You know, Coach Menachem. You know, it's the Ibizog. You know, Coach Menachem. Okay, Baruch Hashem. So I want to thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, for being here tonight. Um, it really is a huge chizik for everyone involved. Um, regarding Chaim Shmiel's question, regarding how do I cram everything in, like a good yid, I'm going to answer it with another question. Not really a question. Really, everything that you said that he wants to know what I do, it's nothing compared to what I really do. 
what I really do is I'm actually spending time with my wife and my kids. And it's not about all the shiurim and the titles and all the different accolades. And hopefully we'll get a glimpse of that a little bit tonight. But anyone who knows anything about being a real person, it's not about all the glitz and the glamour. I actually, uh, I get very creative. And recently, I was like a few months ago, I was making a lot of poems. And one of the poems was about this thing about, you know, many people who have that really a beautiful facade. When it all comes crumbling down, they see that little girl inside of themselves. If anyone wants that poem and anything of my stuff, you could email the, the self project class at gmail.com. I'll try to I'll try to get back to anyone who I could, but it's that's who is really there. It's that little slimy inside, it's the one who spends time with his wife and his kids. So with all those questions, it's really not even about all those things. So how do we do that? That's a different question, but I think it's important for everyone to understand what's really important. Supper time with the kids, that's that's feeling into the, into the schedule. Okay, now there was a university student delivering pizza to the house of a miserly man. So the man says, I suppose you want a tip. So the student says, that would be great. But the other guy who delivers told me that not to expect too much. He said, if I get 50 cents, he says, I'd be lucky. The, the stingy man looks hurt. So to prove him wrong, he says, here, here's $5. And says, by the way, he asked the university student, says, what are you studying? So the student quickly responds. He says, applied psychology. So if you didn't get it, it's about, yeah, I'm not going to explain it. Anyway, but what we're going to be learning today is going to be applied Tyra. We're going to learn about knowledge that can change your life. And it's so important, as Menachem said, I'm very passionate about this idea for many years now already. And the, the, the idea is we're going to learn about what's called the Ficha Bavav Chalas It's literally in your heart and in your mouth to do it, as we're going to see in Hashem tonight. Like, like, like we heard Oshi Menachem, people feel like all these classes, 128, and yet still, still I struggle. Still, I don't know how to figure it out my, my wife and my husband. I still don't know how to figure out my kids. I'm still struggling with my Avaidah Hashem. How does that make sense? There's so much information that's incredible personalities that have been coming onto the show that are out there in the world. Why is this happening? So the title, like Goshi said, was The Secret Key to What's Missing in Our Lives and How We Can Be More Successful with Chinech Abanim, Shalom Ba'is, and Our Avaidah Sashem. Now, I'm going to introduce one key that's going to dramatically shift our whole perspective and our whole transference of these holy ideals. You know, these three, the reason why I picked this title, these three ideas are from the most popular classes in our communities. There are, there are hundreds, maybe thousands, or even tens of thousands of Bishayurim that are live or recorded on these specific topics, Shalom Bayez, Chenech Abanim, Hashem. These are incredible how many stuff there are on this. Now, I have a question. What's going on over here? Why do we need so many classes? What's missing? It hasn't all been said, 128 classes. Didn't we hear it already? Okay, maybe someone's going to say it a little bit differently. They're going to come up with another acronym or maybe with a different accent. You know, you know but, so, but why so many? Why do we need so many classes? But it's more than that. You know, what's more fascinating is it's usually the same people showing up again and again, taking the same courses, maybe a different presenter, but we're coming back again and again. Why? Why is there a reason to repeat the same stuff? Is it having its desired effect? And if not, why not? You know, it reminds me once I, I gave a share, which Mitzvah I'm, go, I'm heading there tomorrow morning, Mitzvah Not Chicago, not the Windy City, Yoshi. Florida, nice, sunny, balmy uh, weather. And I was giving a, 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 a share. And the whole share was about having a relationship with, with Hashem, about connecting Dveikis Hashem. Now, I was running a few minutes over time when Meyer was supposed to be. I since learned my lesson. You end early, not late. But... An old man screams out from the back. He says, Let's daven already. Right? There's obviously something wrong that you're missing if you can hear a shear and say such a comment. And if we're coming and we're hearing so many classes about how to have relationships with your spouse and how to have kinnachabon and how not to, all these different things, we, we we going wrong. So I want to point out something very important. I want to get a Torah perspective. You know, there's a lot of information out there, everywhere. But do we even care what the origin, where is it coming from, what the destination is? 
you know, I, I, as, as, as Menachem mentioned about my self project, I'm, I'm working on finally trying to put it into a book form. And, you know, any new author has this like, you know, insecurity about like, okay, who's going to be interested in buying my book? So a friend, a friend of mine told me, he says, don't worry, people are going to buy your book. He says, we're all so desperate for the answers that anyone who offer you anything, we're going to run. And that's the problem. You know, there's a quote that sometimes I have to tell people that rhymes in Hebrew and in English, called And it's also in English is respect and suspect. You know, you got to do your due diligence. You can't just buy anything, someone who sounds uh, charismatic saying something. You really have to, and that's actually part of the self project is really about she's Barbie, it has, has to be verified, has to really make sense. So I want to try to get a Torah. I don't claim to be the Torah perspective. I don't know if I have any, but I definitely know I've learned many, many years in the primary text of Jewish knowledge. So I'm not coming from some ulterior source. I'm coming from, hopefully, uh, the Torah. So let's conceptualize first, and then we'll get practical, Mir Tzashem. I know that everyone wants to be practical. I get this all the time in my class. People say, okay, we want sound bites. We want practical. We want to walk away with something. So there's a lot to unpack here. And I, you know, obviously this needs more than one show. I don't know if that gets you back on or gets you never coming back on. But the point is, we'll see how much we can get into the show. There's a famous phrase that says that you can't get to second base if you miss first base. That's regarding, obviously, baseball. You have to run around the bases. You got to hit first base first. And there's an order. There's a hierarchy to the world. The world and basic Kabbalah 101, the world was created with 10 spheres. Keser, Chachma, however you say, Chachma, Bina, Das, it goes in this specific order. And that has, has to go that way. It can't go out of order. As we know, if there's no foundation, then there's no structure. You have to create a foundation. What is the assignment? What is the shavish? What is the root? What's the foundation? What's the first base in our lives? You know, everyone's looking for the grand slam, for the home run, and we're striking out. What's the first step in winning a game? So Ramchal, in his opening remarks of the seminal work, the famous classic work, Masil Sharm, tells us one of the lines that's probably been repeated the most in probably in the Musa Shmuzin throughout uh, time since the Ramayusha Chaim Latzata wrote this classic Sefer are the following words. Yisoyed ha-chasidus v'shoyrush The foundation of piety, the root of the service, who? What is that? What is the beginning? What's the foundation? He says, she is barvi samas etzla adam. It should be verified, should be clarified by the person. And he says these words. What is his obligation in his world? And he continues, he says, what are, you, what are you living for? I tell this to people all the time when they, when they have an opportunity. It's like, really, stop and think for a second. What are you living for? We're so caught up in everything. But what for? You know, anyone that's an existentialist struggles and grapples with this question. We, we're so busy making the parnasa. We're so busy preparing for this show. <laughs> like, we're so busy. What are we busy for? What, what are we trying to get out of this? Okay, Ramchal continues as a, as a, as a great uh, thinker of the Jewish people. And he tells us the macro, the destiny, the big picture of Lisan and Galashem, which is a share in its own right, which is that we're here for pleasure. What type of pleasure? But it's we're, we're pleasure seekers, and that's how Hashem made us. But I want to go what's called Shailas Chacham I want to take the Ramchal's question and show you how it's half the answer already. Ramchal is alluding to us something that can be taken for granted, but really many of us are missing out on. What's the whole Mesilas Yashar? Really, one of the classic Hasidim, Litvish, everyone learns Mesilas Yashar. What is the safer teaching us? How to become the ultimate self? How you can become who you need to be, which is a prerequisite, it's something first that you need to have. You cannot begin your obligation in this world before you know Oilamai. First, it has to be Sbar Bisamas Itzla Adam Oilamai. There's so much to mine over here. You know, the, there's well known the words of the Vilna Goyen that he says every word is calculated here. The be deepest, and the Vilna Goyen doesn't just say that about anyone. And everyone knows this idea that in Yeshiva Vel, that he says about the Ramchal, about the Susi Shab, every word, especially in the first few parakim. So there's two extra vows. If you read, you shouldn't say that. Everyone has to know the obligation in the world. He says his obligation in his world. What's his world? So I want to just stress now, focus on the second extra vav, in his world. His world is a singular. It's talking about that your first base, your foundation is your own individual world. That's the first thing you need to verify and to clarify. You know, Menachem, you would appreciate this exercise. 
a classic exercise. If you draw a circle, and inside the circle you write Olam Katan, a small world. A human being is called a Olam Katan, a, a, a miniature, a microcosm. And on the outside you write Olam Gadol, the big world. What will you write where? What is your, your world? How is your world different than the big world? And this you have to start thinking about Olamai. Because without that, says Ramchal, says Moshe Hamad that you're going nowhere. And this is going to be a foundation of tonight's discussion, why we're so stuck in so many different things. In Avram Avinu, the first Jew, obviously there's a lot to learn from the first Jew. Everything in Yiddishkeit, says Ramchal, Tzadik, comes from the first. What's the first directive Hashem tells him? The first thing we hear Hashem telling him is, Lech Lecha. Lech Lecha, translate the word. Besides the fact that it's telling him to go for, for himself, it literally translates as go to yourself. Now, how do you go to yourself? People want to become themselves. How do you do it? So the Kliyaka explains, the words are lech lecha mi'artzicha, mi'latitcha, mi'besavicha. What is, what is Hashem telling him? Go from your land, from your neighborhood, and from your father's household. I like to call the world concentric circles. You're in the center, and then out there's concentric circles outside of you. And the further out it is, is Artsakha. This is your land. You're connected to your land. I'm an American. I'm very, I, you know, I feel comfortable. I'm even an American when I'm in France. I feel comfortable. Then there's my lab in the neighborhood, Brooklyn. I grew up in Brooklyn. So in Brooklyn, wow. And then there's Beis Avicha. Yeah, my brothers, my sisters, Beis Avicha, but they're all not defining you. Says Hashem to Avram Avinu, Peel away the layers like an onion and get to the core of who you are. You know, most people want to grow. And whoever's on the show for sure wants to grow. It's actually a great, uh, you know, people are telling me, you know, be exciting, say funny stories, and maybe maybe do Kazatska. I don't know, whatever. I said, you know, I'm not doing that. Because first of all, this show is for people that are growing people, people that want to hear the truth. And second of all, you really have to be authentic to who you are. And that's what you have to share with the world. So I'm going to be a little heavy. But again, it's a conversation, so I hope we're going to have something exciting to talk about. But even though we want to grow, the problem is, whether we're conscious of it, of it or not, is that the real truth is very scary and almost a little ugly. A lot is going to come up when you have to encounter the truisms that you experienced in your life and who you are and what your experiences are. So what happens is, instead of facing it, we pass it on to something less threatening. It happens a lot in our defense mechanisms. But we go to something a little further away from us. We go to Artsakha, or maybe even just Meilat, or maybe even just Beis Avicha, but it's not yet us. Those three topics I picked for the conversation tonight are things where we focus on because they're a convenient decoy. It's a little controversial what I'm saying right now, but these are areas that we want to grow in but it's not yet touching the core. It's about my wife, about my husband, about my kids, about Hashem. You know what? They all have the word my connected to it. My kids. I like hi, my God. But you know what? It's not about them. It's about the my. It's about the me. It's about who I am. The reason why we have so many courses and so many classes on these three topics, and they're never going to end, is because you can never, ever, ever have them until you become yourself. As Chazal tell us, Chayecha Koidmin. Chayecha Koidmin means that your life has to come first. It's not an allowance. Like everything in Halacha, it's a directive. It's saying you need to become you first. You will never have that relationship with Hashem. Again, when I say never, I'm talking black and white terms. Nothing's black and white. I always live in the gray. But if you're talking black and white terms, that's a sign of maturity that you can live in the gray. But we talk in absolute terms for the uh, convenience of conversation is that you cannot have a relationship with Hashem. You cannot have a relationship with others, with your spouse, with your kids, until you have this relationship with the self. Now, ironically, when you then become the self, you actually flow right into the other arenas. You know, then the way to be there for others is you're being there yourself first. And then really most of the work has been done, just as an example, there's a concept called reparenting. Reparenting, I just saw someone had a, a seminar on it recently, but imagine if, you pictured your own self as a child. Actually, were you cute as a little baby? Right? Imagine yourself as a six-year-old. And who knows what we went through when we were six. I was, I was getting patched up in, in yeshiva maybe. But 
What happens is, imagine you start stroking, and again, I'm obviously going very fast here. Menachem, we, we usually go very slow. We're just talking here, so talking itself is, uh, is, is already fast. So imagine stroking your hair as a child. That itself helps you when your own child self is calm, that when you're dealing with your own child, you're not getting triggered. Again, there's so much, you know, I don't remember how it works. I know this is my platform, but I know if you, you could speak up, you don't have to. But the point is, I would like and hopefully we'll be able to show how the experience we have with everyone else is really the experience of our own selves, including Hashem. When you, when you, have, when you experience something with Hashem or with others, it's really your own self you're experiencing just through with them. It's never really them. And it's a really huge, huge idea. But it's, it's the same thing like baseball. That even if the main thing is to come home, you have to score points. If you, you leave men on base, nothing is, you didn't get anywhere. But your job is to get on base. Your first base, you got to be yourself. Then you can connect with your teammates to get home. You know, this is something that people have complained to me very often after they hear me speak. And they say that we're trained, and it's necessarily like that, which is interesting, that the tachlis avoid the session and to live for others. And it would seem that the self. Is, is not as important. But you know what's interesting? Avram Avinu was the one who created, he was the first one to create. No, he had one, but Avram Avinu was the first one to create a relationship with Hashem, his house night. And he introduced the pillar of Chesed, which are the two sides of the Luchas. He was the first one to have Benad Mamakim and Benad Machavei with Chesed. But what did Hashem tell him? The first thing you need is the Luchas, is to be yourself, is the Lechacha. You know, it's interesting. No one talks about it. The self, whenever I talk about these things, people say, what? How come no one talks about this? But you know, it says, Kasvam aluach libecha. Write them on the tablets of your heart. You need to be the luchas. You know, it's a step that's taken for granted in the words of the Sils Yisharm. But, and it's really sorely missing in today's generation. You know, Kabbalistically, they say that the six thousands, a year, uh, that, that, uh, that thousand, every the 6,000 years in the world, Carly is the six days of creation. And on the sixth day of creation was Nasa Adam, and we're missing in the Nasa Adam. The reason why for man was created Yechidi was so that he could say Bishvili never Oilam. And Menachem, I don't know if you can remember this, but way back when we were discussing this idea, you said you meant something different, but we said, like, imagine a visualization that you're the only one on the planet. There's no one else. What would you be like? It's almost scary to think about. We wouldn't even recognize ourselves. So we don't realize this. We give up our power, and then the voice rings out and says, Ayeka, where are you? <laughs> that's the Eicha, that's the Ayeka, where are you? You know, this, the, the, we need to remember the, the famous Rebbe who said, they say with different people, he wanted to change the world. They realized he's not changed the world. He says, okay, I want to change my country. He's not changing his country. He wanted to change his state. He's not changing his state. He wanted to change his neighborhood. Not working. He wanted to change his family. Not working. He said, change my wife. Not working. He says, okay. He realized he could only change himself. And when he changed himself, he realized his wife changed, his family changed, his neighbor changed, his city state, his state, country, and the world. The only thing that you can and need to do is to become who you are. It's such an important insight. I hope we're going to dwell on this a little bit. Avram Avinu introduced monotheism into the world. People, you begin an impression of Avram Avinu. You think he's a man of the world. He traveled the world. He got up on lecture and said, I had a dream. I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw there was a God. And this God spoke to me. That was not Avram Avinu. I'm sorry to tell you. Avram Avinu, what he did was he lived in his tent and he opened up himself on all four sides and he allowed others to come into his tent, planting them inside of him. By being yourself, authentic, you create what's called the nafshi ka'afar. Afar is always a symbolism. Avram was anirchi afar ve'afar. When you are dirt, people plant themselves inside you. And then that creates chesed, allowing other people to be there. Let me say one more thing. I hope I'm not really overdoing this. Why is it so important to be ourselves? And what does that even mean? So I want to back up for a second. Why are we here? Now, I don't mean here on the world-famous Coach Menachem show, because we all know why we're here, because of the great inspiration. I mean, why are we here on this world? What meaning? There's so many ways to answer that question, but what are we supposed to be doing? So let me, let me explain one angle. Before every single mitzvah, some say the following nusach, and even those who don't, we all say it by Pesukah de Zimra. We say what's called the Shem Yichud Kuchu B'nei 
We want to unify the Kaddish Baruch Hu and his divine presence. What is that? Kaddish Baruch Hu symbolizes the mashpia, the, the, the source of the flow, and shrinte is the, the symbolism of the receiver, of the receptacle, of the vessel. You know, there's one phrase that we start our life with and we end our life with, and we say it three times a day, and it's really the verse of the Jewish people, Shema Yisrael, hear O Israel, Hashem Elikeinu, Hashem is Elikeinu, Hashem Echon. Hashem is really refers to Chesed, Elikeinu is Din in a very simplified way. We want to show that the right and the left, Hashem is Echon, he's one. Now, what one means is not that he's not, he's one, not two, is that everything is really him, it's all one. There's nothing but him. It's only one. Now, how are we doing that? How are we making Yichud Kuchbrich? All the Rebbe's, they do Yichudim. They, 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 they make a unification. That's the whole purpose of the world, is to be Meyachad. How are we doing this? There's one of the most famous Mishnahis in probably all of Shas, in the Mishnah Masech Nesavos. Ashleish Adrama Oilamayim. The world stands on three pillars. Alatayra, Malavayda, and Gimel Chasad. Now, the Maral explains this Mishnah and that a pet peeve I just have to put out there of mine is that people think morale is like machshav. Morale is the most, maybe one of my next farm besides the self project will be safer on morale to show how real he is. It's, I don't like when people make it machshav. They go, oh, it's, wow, numbers and this and that. It's, it's, it's very nice. But okay, what are these three pillars that the world stands on? So you first have to explain what is the world to explain what are the pillars that it's holding it up. What's the whole purpose of the world? You know, what does Hashem do since he made the world? The world's here. And now there's something happening here. What is God doing all day? So it's a Gemara. It's an interesting Gemara. There's a Roman noble woman came over to Rebbe Kim and says, your God made the world in six days. What does he do all day now? He's watching the Giants game. What does he do? He's, what does God do all day? It's a good question. Because God obviously has, he has an intimate relationship with the world. So Rebbe Kiva said, he's Mezavik Zivugan. Which simply translates that as he makes Shadokha which is obviously a great thing. And everyone should get their Shadduchim speedily. But the story goes on that she matched up her 400 maidservants with the servants and they came back the next morning and this one had a black and blue mark, this had a broken arm, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. Now Rizal says, no, that can't be. It's so much deeper. And anything in our Torah, Maral's whole purpose was to show the depth of Torah that people read something and they have this shallow interpretation. She says, you know what it means, Mezavik Zibugim? It means to say, why are we all here on the show? Why am I looking at Ushi straight uh, directly? I don't know why I see you, Ushi, the whole time, not myself. But I guess that's better. You look good. So why are we here is because Hashem is peering things together. What Hashem does, and this is pretty cool, is that he, he makes you on the bus next to this person. He makes you have this woman working next to you in your office. He makes this person in front of you in line with their seven kids. He pairs everything together. So whatever happens in your life, God is constantly matching these things up, which is very important. Tamachachim is called Shabbos. The Gemara says, Tamachachim ikri Shabbos. Why is he called Shabbos? What does Tamachachim do? On Shabbos, we have what's called Saif Maisa B'machshav Atchilo. We connect the, the, the furthest action, the most coarse-based part of our, of our life, like we know that the halacha is oina belel Shabbos. You take the most, the rabbi says the lowest sense is that of touch. The highest is smell. The lowest is touch. And we make that into the holiest thing on Shabbos. Because you have to connect the soif ma'isa with machshab. You take the, the highest part of the human being, which is his, his machshaba, and you connect it to the soif ma'isa, which is intimacy, which is the greatest. What is intimacy? It's yichud. It's unification. It's zivu. It's peering up the ultimate opposites of Zohar and Akeva, because the world is like a puzzle. And we're pieces of the puzzle. And Hashem is the cover of the puzzle box. This is my Chavus, is Marshall. And we need to be our puzzle piece. That's all we need to be. Hashem puts the puzzle together, but you need to be your puzzle piece. I'll never forget, we were once in the Catskills early on when they got married, and it's not much to do over there. I'm sorry. At least I wasn't going to go to anywhere. So we're up we're there in the basement in the Catskills. And all well, my sister-in-laws, I'm like the only uh, guy there during the week, I guess it was Shana Rishayin or Shana Shnei, whatever it was. And uh, we're making puzzles. What else do you do? So we're making puzzles. And it's one of these puzzles that there's, I don't know, 10,000. I, I don't know. I haven't done puzzles in a long time. 
and, and we're putting it together. It takes one day, two days, three days, four days. We're finally nearing the end, and we're looking. No, the last piece is missing. No, you can't. I was going crazy. We spent a week on this, and we're looking, picking up the couches, looking everywhere. This is mamish like it's the, like it was Tisha B'Av. Now, imagine if you're that puzzle piece. Now, you know, certain puzzle pieces are like the main part of the person's face has the like the left eye with the beautiful hair coming down. And it has like all these different tentacles going into all these different pieces or concaves and it's all connected. And you are this little piece that has no color, has no tentacles. You, you're not manifesting it to anyone else. You have this like one fresh thing in the concave, and like like this for director, like you put it in, and that's your old. You have nothing. You're like you. You don't even. And you say, you know what? Who needs me? I'm gonna go. Not even between the couch, between the cushion. I'm gonna go under. You know, with the metal bars that when no one even finds you on Pesach, and you find that Cheerio like Shmuel's time. Like who? Who did Pesach cleaning here? Who? You know, you can't even find that. And that's where the puzzle piece goes because no one even needs me. No one can, and Hashem is like, where are you? It's incomplete. That's what you need to be. You need to be your puzzle piece. And that's all we can be. And we don't have to connect all the pieces. Hashem connects the pieces, which is a fascinating philosophical idea. And hopefully we're going to make it a little bit psychological and practical shortly. But the purpose is to perfect the world. Tikkun olam, everyone says. How do you make tikkun olam? By being your piece. How does that make tikkun olam? Because Hashem is the mizavik. You experience this at all times. You know, something called serendipity. Serendipity is when you, wow, what a fortune. Wow, I met you. I couldn't imagine. There's such a, we call it hashkacha pratis. What does that mean? Like a symphony, like a play. My, my, I have a daughter who's in song dance now. And you know what song dance is, is she? Do you sing? You don't sing by song dance, no. But she has a beautiful voice. I don't know why she's not in song, but it's a whole shtick or whatever. But she, you don't even know how it's going to play itself out. She, they just practice things. And when they do the, the prep for the play, you're like, wow, now I know where it fits in. That's exactly our life. Hashem is the, the director. You're just an actor or actress playing your actual role. The whole world is about connecting. Zivu, Yehudim, even social media feeds over this. We're all trying to connect. And that's where our mission begins. Hashem wants to unify, to make it all echad. We're going to see it's all one. It's about connecting the most disparate pieces of the world. And there are three pillars of connection. That's where the Mishnah starts. Now, two of these are very well known. Avoida and Gimel Chasadim is what's called Benodim Lamakim. It's a relationship with Hashem. And there's Benodim Lachadeh having a relationship with other people. But Maral is well known for his Chidush on the first pillar. He says it's called Ben Adam La'atzmei. Now, this is something that bothers me to no end because people have no clue what this means. Ben Adam La'atzmei means having a relationship with yourself, just like Ben Adam La'amok and Ben Adam La'chaveri means having a relationship with others. And what's more important is that it has to do with first one. The Mishnah's order is specific. Torah, Avoida, and Kimil's Chasadim. To have a relationship with God, to have a relationship with others, you need to have a relationship with your own self. That's where I'll stop now from the introduction. But I, I, I have to just get that idea out that people have to know, even if they leave the shir now, to understand that the way you need to get shalom bias, to have your avoid with Hashem, to have your shalom, your, your, your chinuch abonim, it's going to have to come from yourself first. Okay. Okay. Rav Shlema, beautiful, deep. <laughs> And now we're going to jump into it, okay? I always say, come on, lay it out, and then uh, after uh, we, we grill you, then we finally understand what you're saying. Exactly. Okay, so everybody's here tonight. We have the Zoichet, we have Shlomo Schwartzberg, world famous Daf Mishir, therapist, Rav, every title in the book, huge Talmud Chacham. Um, you could ask him anything and everything. We have a live question, but we're going to do a poll, and then we're going to go to the first live question, okay? Let's go. Three question poll. Everybody, let's answer. Here we go. First question. What do you think it means to be more in touch with your inner self? Four options. Understanding what triggers you and what talks to you. Having self-control over your feelings. Being your best friend slash trusting yourself. Or number four, have you have more understanding of issues than regular people. So again, let me just repeat the question. It's a deep question. 
What do you think it means to be more in touch with your inner self? A, understanding what triggers you and what talks to you. B, having self-control over your feelings. C, being your best friend slash trusting yourself. Or D, you have more understandings of issues than a regular person. You're more deeper. Okay, you could answer the best of those four. It could be all those four, just one of those options. Second question, do you think, your opinion, do you think most people are self-aware of what's happening inside of them? No, most people are reacting to the situations around them. Yes, for the most part is the second option. And the third part, the third option is I don't even understand this question. They don't even understand what the question is. Do you think most people are self-aware of what's happening inside of them? Third question. Wow, <laughs> she's laughing. Why are there so many classes on Sholem Bias, Chinuch, than anything else? Why is that from all the classes? Not Coach Menachem, but it happens to be Coach Menachem does have a tremendous amount of that. But in general, these are the most, people pay thousands of dollars for Sholem Bias and for Chinuch. So why are those the most important things? Four options. Because A, because they are the most difficult issues. B, um, since there's no real answer, we are running in circles. C, because they are the most important issues. Or D, it is self-work, which makes it so hard. So everybody on, please answer. And then we're going to go to the first live question. Give me one sec. So are you going to tell me your answers in a minute? Oh, my. I thought we're going with the popular vote tonight. We'll find out. One second. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. And now we're going to share with everybody every answer, okay? 370 people, 315 people. Let's share it with everybody. Shalom, we're going to share it. And then if you have comments, please comment on it, okay? Okay. Now we're sharing the answers with everybody. Number one, what do you think it means to be more in touch with your inner self? So the whopping 69% of people say understanding what triggers you and what talks to you. So that's what 67% of people. Only 8% of people said having self-control over your feelings. 90% of people said being your best friend slash trusting, trusting yourself. And option four, only 3% three, only 3 of people said this. You have more understandings of issues than a regular person. Shlomo, you want to comment on this or you want to go to the next one? Um, yeah, I really like the, the options. Um, mm -hmm. If I had to answer being more in touch, if I was a literalist, mm -hmm. I would say that um, it, would, it would be really number one and three, um, depending on how you're defining it. Those are two very, very important pieces. And um, if you really want to say about touch, then it would be number three, being your best friend and trusting yourself. Okay, let's go to the next one. You ready? Mm -hmm. Do you think most people are self-aware of what's happening inside of them? 86% of people say no. Most people are reacting to the situations around them. 12% say yes for the most part. And 2% said, I don't even understand what this question is. So let me maybe explain the question. And then what do you think about the answer? Okay. You yes. That most people are not in touch. Yeah. So that's, oh, oh, I just want to know the people who answered also know they're not in touch because most they, people. No, they know. They, no, 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 no. Oh, know other answer, people. They're, they're the people. They're the 12%. They, they are in touch. Exactly. They know that the that's rest exactly. of the people. Again, the question is. I got that. Think most people are self-aware. They're not, it's not about them. Right. I got that. I got that. Um, so do you think most people are self-aware of what's happening? Right. So uh, to a large extent, I think most people are not. I'm not aware of what's happening inside of them. I think we don't live inside ourselves. And uh, that's the human nature, unless you change that, unless you, we're going to speak about that, hopefully, unless you shift that. So, oh, so to explain the question, um, yes, because, um, it, 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 meaning we're not, what, the question, I guess, to explain it is that there's something that goes on inside of ourselves. And the reason why some people said they don't understand the question is because they never experience what that means to feel something inside of it. And therefore, most people don't know what's going on inside of themselves because we were never taught or never experienced this experience of being inside ourselves. So it's almost like explaining to someone who doesn't have taste about what chocolate tastes like. So therefore, that's why it's a struggle to understand this question. There is an experience that we get if we're self-aware that we're having inside of ourselves. <clears throat> Let's go to the last question. Why are there so many classes on Shalom Bayez, Chinuch, than anything else? And 11% said because those are the most difficult issues. 2% said since there's no real answers, we're running in circles. 20% because they are the most important issues. 
And the winning answer, 67% of people said, it is self-work which makes it so hard. Yeah, wow, they're all good options. <clears throat> I think probably the last one is uh, it's gonna be is gonna be the answer. Yeah, but they're all pretty good options. The last one is really what I want to focus on. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, okay. Uh, somebody's on for the first question. We'll start with that one first. Let's press star six to talk. You're on. Shlaima, can you hear me? Yes. How you doing? I appreciate you taking this question. Just two questions. You say that this is the key to everything. So I just want to know, first of all, what, like, what is, what's the struggle? What is it that people can find themselves that have troubled themselves? Also, maybe a more broad question. You describe your project as the self project, like it's a thing. The self is just me. What do you mean? Is the, is the self made up of many different things? Maybe describe what the self is. <clears throat> and does it work together? Is, are there many, like, just if you can give me something on that, you can answer either question, I guess. But if this is the key to everything, again, what's people struggle, maybe just sh shortly. And if you're calling it the self, like what exactly is the self? Right. It's a great question. You stole Menachem's question, probably. <laughs> so, yeah, the self project. Yeah, it is a project. And there is something called the self. Now, What's fascinating about that question is that most people view the self as a singular entity. In other words, there's other people and there's myself. And I just, wanna, I just wanna pause you for a second. Yeah. Anybody who has any questions, I'm getting a lot of questions, text Usher Parnas questions. All those questions are gonna go in order of life. So please text that text, okay? Sorry, continue, Shama. Yeah, sure. So it's, 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 it's a very, very uh, a deep question. Um, regarding what the self is and how that's going to help all the other things. Um, I think I'll focus on the second question. Um, what the self is, the self is not one thing. Meaning, you know, a lot of people view self as selfish because that's definitely what it sounds like. And when we say selfish, meaning we view it as a negative thing. And I'm going to hopefully address this as we go along, but if you view another person and yourself and you're taking for yourself, that is a, a negative thing. In Jewish philosophy and in the, in the, in, even in the secular world, we view that as taking and taking is generally associated with, with evil versus giving. Because if everyone takes, then the world is anarchy. If everyone gives, then we have harmony. Now, there's a Toysvis in Mesechtis Tainis that tells us something very fascinating. Quotes a pasig, nafshay ish chesed. Goimel nafshay, the way Tysus translates is, when someone does something for their own self, you're an ish chesed. What does that mean? It means to say is that you're not taking when you take care of your body, you're giving to yourself. In other words, your self is comprised of more than one entity. It's not you and other people because then it's taking from others. No, you are giving to your body. When you shower, Hill, a famous story, Hill, someone asked Hill where he's going. He said, I'm going to polish the statue. So what statue? He says, my body. I'm taking care of my body. God gave me a statue and I'm going to take care of it. When we groom ourselves, when we feed ourselves, we're actually taking care of the closest person in the concentric circles that we have responsibility for, which is our own selves. So it says, Toys says, you're not a taker, you're a giver. You're giving to yourself. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I get like that. So stop me if, if I'm going too far. But one of the teachings that made me a chassid of Reb Nachman of Breslov, I didn't say I'm Breslov. I said I became a chassid of Reb Nachman of Breslov was, before, before I know it, it's out there, is that in Torah Chav Beis, he said something that blew me away. And I never saw anyone speak the way he said it. He says that he translated, I actually saw later the Chavetz Chaim brings of the Tunde the Veil Yo, but I don't know if anyone ever saw that. But this teaching from Rav Nachman, he really says it out. Mibsarcha al tisal. We all know this halacha. When it comes to chesed, chesed starts at, at, in the home. Everyone knows that phrase. Where does the halacha come from? From a passing mibsarcha al tisal, from your flesh, from your relatives, al tisal, don't turn a blind eye. Says Rav Nachman, mibsarcha means your own baser, your own body. Altasam, don't turn the blind eye. Your responsibility to give starts with yourself before everyone else. So you're not 
Taking, you're doing an act of kindness when you take care of yourself. So the self project really is that the first relationship you need to have is a relationship with the self. It's a relationship. What morale calls being Adam la'atzmoy. People read it as, oh yeah, yeah, something about the self. Not that, it's a relationship. It's all connections. The whole world is zivug, is connection. That's why a chuppah is the holiest time because we're connecting opposites. Shabbos is connecting the opposites. It's all the purpose of unity, of unifying. Achdus. That's the whole purpose of the world. So uh, I hope I answered that question. Uh, definitely a loaded question, but it's it, uh, a good one, nonetheless. Okay, Shlomo, let's go to the let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the let's go to the next live question. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay, you're on. Hi, thank you. Um, my question that follows, um, you know, we have a talk on that everything is meant to be exactly the way it is. Like you said, that um, Hashem is the job of the So we know that the way we parent our children is exactly what our children needed. That's the journey they needed to go through. But for ourselves, you know, when we realize that we parented them the wrong way, um, A, based on our own flaws or maybe because of the way we were parented um, and now we feel guilty for the way we parented them or um, we just want to repair altogether for our children's sake. How do we deal with that? Okay, great question. I love that question because I get this all the time. I was once telling a principal to an older couple uh, in their 60s and they were like oh if we had heard you years ago you would have saved us so much sorrow in our marriage and then what do I tell them it was meant to be right now at this moment that you heard this I mean we believe that when I mean my name I mean Hashem sets these things up it's supposed to be you're going to hear it when you're supposed to hear it I was telling you actually someone to this yesterday trying to remember what I was schmoozing with someone on Shabbos and I said I was comparing to the famous Chazal of like it's going to be that doctor, that place, at that time, not a moment sooner. And actually, one of the tests is if someone does, I'm not going to say anything about certain types of alternative medicine, but if it's a Zara, it might appear like it's that. But Chazal explicitly tell us this. They, they, they bavar it. So everyone's into these healing that it helps. Chazal tell us that Hashem is going to give you the opportunity because a moment before it was going to work, you walked into that practice and then you think it's that, but it's all Hashem. Again, that's, that's a whole class in the Mun Betacha to understand how that works in Ashkacha. But the point is, you were supposed to learn about what you're supposed to learn about at a certain time. Now, when you learn about something, guilt is debilitating. The, the Svarim Rabbein, the Yoyin talks about the beginning of Shara Tshuva, guilt is not healthy in the initial experience of when you learn that you did something wrong. It's only if you one time did something wrong. Rabbein Yoyin explicitly, it's a, it's a fascinating teaching that people don't realize. Guilt is not appropriate. You're not supposed to use guilt. It's not effective. And in our svarm, it's the same thing. When you do learn about something, so if it's something to make a repair, like you said, so we make that repair and we understand that it was supposed to be like it was. And any mistake that we make is the same thing. When we buy something that was the wrong product, this was supposed to be. And if something for me to do about it, fine. If not, then that's, that's the reality. That's what it's supposed to be. So the fact that my children went through something so now I have an opportunity to call it do tshuva and reclaim who I am and who I could be for them. So that experience that they went through, like you said, was meant to be. And that's their challenge. And it was a partly our challenge. And now what can we do about it right now? So um, like, I think you really said it already. And um, I'm just really um, reflecting back what you said that, um, to understand that idea that it was meant to be at that time uh, that we're supposed to hear it because like yeah we didn't we didn't hear this when we were kids and we didn't know this and, and it's never too late and sometimes you get more schlissen when you hear about later because that's true mahava true mahava is that there's something called post-traumatic growth post-traumatic growth is the concept that when you tear tiny muscles when you're doing exercise they actually become stronger <laughs> than when you didn't tear them at all so the idea is when you have trauma, trauma is not necessarily a bad thing. What do you think we become? Every great person, right? Menachem, tell them, Oshi. Tell them, all great people, they went through Gehenna. That's how they became what they're supposed to be. There's not one personality that I know of that didn't suffer. And that's actually what made them into who they're supposed to become. However, however, fine, however fine that challenge was, but that's exactly what made them develop an ego strength. That little pebble of sand that creates an irritant, creates a pearl. That, that's how it is. 
So whatever it was that became, and now you learned this idea and you're going to do, so to speak, chuba, which means really becoming back who you're supposed to be. <laughs> that's actually even greater had you never, had you, had you always known this in the first place. So, yeah. Okay, Shlom, let's go to the next live one. Yeah. Let's see if I'm muting. Hold on. <coughs> Hi, how are you? Hi, can I, can I be heard? Yes, you can be heard. You're okay. on an airplane. I'm on a plane. It hasn't taken off yet, but Rabasher, thank you for the opportunity. So I'm just going to ask my question really quick. I hope it's not too loaded. So, um, First of all, you're, everything you're saying is Gavaldi, Rabbi Schwartzberg, fantastic. I'd love to hear more of your shiur. Um, so this thing about, about self-awareness, lach lecha, et cetera, know thyself, but that's in the secular. The world is so external and so superficial. I just want to mention two maybe disparate ideas. The Targum Yonison, last week's Parsha, Vayed Elohim, says that everybody knew, sorry, nobody knew about each other's tshuva. I believe Kigula Rishina, Kangula Hoina, that's what's going to be today. But it seems so the opposite. We have all these Shirim and all these rallies and all these, everything public, public, public. And the other comment is that I heard, I don't know if this is true, the Vilna Gain writes somewhere, maybe not in the most famous farm, that the, the door before Mashiach is going to be so external. So I just want to know how do you, how would you suggest to make all these things dovetail with each other? Please put away your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for takeoff. All right. Let's no, get I'm, I'm, I'm still listening. I'm still listening. Okay, Take him by. Um, so that's a great question. I love it because I I believe, like you said, that we're living in a generation that's so externalized and, and, and you can't even make this stuff up. It's it's incredible how. We know these ideas, but but it's really in the, in the it's canonized in the text about the the the, the, the like the billboards or the pop ups that steal they're called I call them dream snatchers, because when we look outside, it steals our dreams because all our dreams are inside of ourselves, and Chazal tell us and and the the Mishnah Guru brings in the beginning of the, of, of 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 a sefer in Bialocha from the sefer Chinuch the six constant mitzvahs. Uh, Torah made it popular from Noah Weinberg, the six constant mitzvahs. And one of them is, don't stray after your hearts and after your eyes. Now, most people, and actually it's funny, someone contacted me just the other day about giving a, a, a video for Shmir Zanayim. Now, people think Shmir Zanayim is just about immorality. It's such a mistake. The Chinuch says clearly, don't stray after your eyes. You know, people want to take me and say, you want to see Shira's new home? You want to see, you want to see uh, Shmuley's Kala? Like, why would I want to do that? Not because of immorality, but why would I want my eyes to feast on other people's lives? All great people, says Rabbi Yerucham, everyone says this, Vayivasar Yaakov Lavada. Spend time alone. Every great leader was a shepherd. Moshe was Roy sign. Why? David was Roy sign. Why? Because they spent time alone. His boy did this. You know, people make a big mistake. They think his boy just means speaking to Hashem. Could be. That's not the main his boy does. His boy did means badad. Be alone with yourself. No one else. Menachem, you probably know the famous study where Dr. Pelk was like saying over that uh, when you had, they did a study, they put people in a room and there was nothing to do, no phones, no nothing. And the only thing there was was electrocuting shot. And I think 60s, I'm making up the number, 66% of men, and there was a lower number of women, like 38% women, touched the electric shot because they couldn't just be with themselves. And it's scary because we're so living on the outside, we can't be with our own selves. And there's an interesting passing in Mishle that, that I translate that's fascinating. It says, Chacham ain't a Beresha. It's a well-known phrase. Chacham is ain't a Beresha. People usually use it as a term that, ah, he sees the future. Which doesn't say that. It says, Chacham ain't a Beresha. You know what it means? His eyes are, it doesn't say me Beresha. Beresha. You know what a Chacham does? He looks at his own thoughts. He's not looking outside. He's looking inside. What's inside of me? What am I thinking of? Because you realize, and any, any great thinker on, on self-help genre talks about this, that it's all the narrative, it's all, your self, it's all your self-talk. Look inside your own head. What are you thinking? Our eyes are out there. That's the problem. That's why we have to shmir zanayim. Look down, say the swan. 
Don't look past your Dalai Lamas because that's all part of your area, your energy field. And, you know, if people with the energy uh, field understand there's something in your in your existential area, in your Dalai Lamas, in your six to eight feet, you have actually an energy. People do healing with just having their hands near you because you have an energy field. You have to live inside yourself. And the challenge of the dare, like this uh, questioner said so beautifully, is that we're pulled out to look how much are our eyes busy with the screens or anything that says the Sefer Chinech is Sasui. Don't stray after your eyes because our eyes are like a Mayan. The word Ayan comes from the root of Ma'ayan. It's a spring and everything flows into that spring into your consciousness. Why would I want my consciousness filled with that person's dreams? Fill it with your own neshama. Stay inside your body. And that's why, okay, I'm getting way past myself, but that's why there's many times you cover our eyes. A column has a badekin to cover our eyes. Shema, we cover our eyes. During the week, says Arizal, we cover our eyes when we dive in Shema Nase to stay inside ourselves, to have interoception, to experience my own self, not what's outside. Why is it? Why is it so hard for, for those people? Why were they looking for some stimulation? Why do people look outside? Why couldn't, why couldn't they sit there? Why did they actually... Oh. Right. So I'm, saying, I'm trying to go down to what's the reason why it's so hard for a person to just be by himself. Right. So when, you, when you're with yourself, you then start noticing what's usually right underneath the surface. You know, when there's, let, let's say, imagine, you know, there's, you're in a, a, in a base medrash and there's a cacophony of noise. So you don't notice certain whispers. But imagine you silence all that outside noise. And then you start hearing this light little tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, you know? And then suddenly you notice it and it starts, it's like Ed, Edgar Allan Poe. It's like, it's like the, you know, the, I don't remember when I was a kid, I remember reading that, like the, the heartbeat from the floor, boom, 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 boom. You're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You, when you're silent, you suddenly start hearing your soul talking to you and it's scary because you've been, you know what it's like? I'll give you a great muscle what it's like. You have a couple that's hosting a whole, like, you know, yumptive meal. And, and they have 20 guests over. And it's such a geshemak as and there's stories. And there's nagunim and kumzits. And everyone's eating stuff. And their mom is floating in the air. Everyone finally leaves. And it's just a couple. Now, mind you, this couple doesn't talk to each other. Now, when everyone was there, it was geshemak. They were enjoying each other. But when there's no one left, just the two of them, then it gets ugly. You can't sit there with her. You don't know what to do. You start fidgeting. She's like, what's up? And he starts, he starts uh, looking. He starts getting up, going to the fridge. It's like, how'd you like to meet? And he's like, he's on his way out. That's what happens to us. Okay, beautiful. Shlema, next question. Is that, getting, does that metaphor camera? explain it? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, you're on. Hi, can I be heard? Yes. Are you on mute? Am I on mute? What's going on? No, everybody hears everybody. I don't you hear you. You don't, don't mute it. Did I mute it? You don't hear us? Flamin, can you hear me? I don't hear you. I don't know okay. why. One second. Did Give I do one something? Give one second. Give one second. I figure it out. So, Menachem. Yeah. What's going on? Well, it's good to hear. Um, I don't know why I hear it. I hear it. Oh, the telltale heart. Someone just texted me. It's the telltale heart. Um, why do I hear it as mute? I don't hear anything. Why? I think I pressed something. One second. We never had this one. Yeah, this is his speaker. My audio. I think I pressed something. I'm just not sure. Okay. okay. He muted himself. I'm mute. Yeah, I'm muted. Can you hear me? Your speaker. Hear you. Oh, maybe it's my volume. Oh, you know what? Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, now I hear you. Oh. You hear me? Yeah, what happened was it was I had something black in the screen and I touched something and then see it goes to show you this is not a perfect muscle. Right? My father once had this. He he once everywhere he went that day, as I mizuk the nidish, so gestinken. Everyone's what's with everyone today? Everyone stinks. No one took showers today. And he's looking, he showered himself that day, and he's he's looking at himself. Boss, you can't find anything. Finally, at the end of the day, he realized he ate something with cheese in the morning. Okay, one second, one second. Okay, Shlemy, I'm you. Yes. 
Yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah. And he ate something with cheese that morning and it melted on his mustache. So he was smelling his own, his own grach, you know, as in the So, <laughs> so, so like, yeah, my volume is off. And I'm like, what's up, what's up with everyone? Why is everyone not making noise? So whatever, it's a good muscle for that. Okay, you ready to go to the next live question? You're on. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So first, I'm really enjoying the share. And my question is, I, I wrote it up, um, posted it, but he asked me to, you know, say it um, here live. Sounds so, real. Yeah. Okay. So if you were to walk into the grocery, the shul, or anywhere where you find a lot of from people, I'm always observing that most people appear very harried, worried, unhappy, just not present. It hurts me that even though Yiddishkeit is really the path to happiness, somehow a large majority doesn't live the happiness that true Yiddishkeit should bring about. Why are we so disconnected? And the question is continues, should we not dig away on Chayvah Salvova's Ramchal and the basic foundations um, as part of our children's education? So many of us wake up at 30 with a real quest to make sense of all of this even after having grown up in the cream of the crap of orthodoxy. Sadly, many are not even waking up at that age and living a very disconnected, pain-filled life for so much longer. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear anything that you have to offer on that. Okay, great question. Well, first of all, I want to observe. I thought your question was going to sound like the exact opposite. I get this question all the time, not question, or at least the, the perception that everyone else is living a blissful life. Oh, no. <laughs> Every, everyone's so happy. And everyone has everything going well. And you know what's going on in my life? Oh, you don't understand. I'm having problems with my spouse and my panasa and my, no, I'm saying, but they're both actually valid questions. It's just fascinating to notice that I get that, I get that one so often that, you know, everything looks so rosy dozy. And at the same time, your question also is, is, is also a, a definitely a very valid question, which you're obviously noticing that it's not like that facade and people are harried and people are scattered and they're not living with the menucha, with that yishavadas, with that shalom. And you wanna know why? And also why we not like learning all the texts that could help us and to get there and you know, why we're waking up at 30 and some people not even waking up at 30 when we could have do due diligence and taught this when we're younger. Is that correct? Did I get you? Yes, very much so, yeah. Okay. so. Regards to the chinuch of, of what to learn. So there's so many different angles to take over here. Um, me and Menachem, we had this, this discussion many years ago about emotional intelligence, how to teach emotional intelligence. Menachem being the erudite scholar that he is, he, and Menachem, I, could I share this? Everything goes on. Muted, Coach Muted. Yeah, everything I, don't goes on. What, I don't know what you're going to say, but go ahead. Everything goes on Coach Menachem's show, so uh, no holds barred. So he would read a book with stories, and he would explain to his kids, well, what do you think Shmuley's feeling right now? Well, what do you think Devorah wanted to do? What, would, what was bothering her? And that was fascinating. I was like, wow, that's, that's really cool. How come I don't do that? And, and, and it really is a cool way of teaching emotional intelligence. And I noticed what I do is very different. I noticed that I don't teach anything in that way to my kids. What do I do? How do I introduce emotional intelligence to them? I'm being myself and hopefully a healthy self. And I'm creating healthy attachment because when I'm being myself, my kids are experiencing a father, a husband who's totally present and vulnerable. Obviously I'm not, I'm saying, but we're talking about ideals, right? Um, and, and that experience introduces to their subconscious emotional intelligence. Why do I say that? Because when we're younger, we're very black and white. And kids find it very hard to understand certain concepts. You can't explain certain things to kids at a certain age. It requires a maturity to understand that. They don't understand certain things. So when it comes to emotional intelligence, are you going to teach it to them cognitively or emotionally, consciously or subconsciously? It's a very important idea. So how does that relate to your question? The swarm of the Ramchal, the swarm of the Chavis al Vavis, are very, very cerebral. They're very, very heavy in the ideas that they are. One of the challenges we have in our, in our community is that we have people with very high IQ. 
but their EQ, it's called their emotional quotient, is very low. I see that very often. And many people have experienced these people. And sometimes it's even intimidating to me. I'm like, this guy is like, put me to, oh, this guy walks all over me. This guy, he's asking me questions about, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, and then I realize, I'm like, wait a second. This guy has nothing in regard. And when I say that, I mean to say, because we're talking about when you're, when you're, when you're trying to relate and connect to people, their, their emotional quotient is down over here. So when we teach things, we could teach, of course, no one's taking away from the Sosyasham, and most yeshivas, I think most Masifthas have the Sosyasham, and Chavis al is in, in certain places. Um, what people are waking up to at 30, first of all, is actually appropriate, because there are certain ages and stages when we're supposed to wake up. It's not really waking up, it's really a growth spurt that we have, because um, we don't really understand things until we get to a certain place. Now, that, that, ex that experience, that openness could come a little bit younger, but it's supposed to come when we're, when we're older. Now, shifting to the other part of the question, maybe I'll, I'll put it back in, in together, the Humpty Dumpty, is that when we see people that are disconnected, is for this exact reason, because IQ in our community is very high. We learn ideas that are very, very top heavy, but we don't have it connecting to our body. And Menachem will appreciate this idea because he's like, okay, so Menachem does this for a living. He, he, he's like, okay, so wait a second. So okay, let's slow this down and let's open this up. And let's, what are you feeling right now? And the objective of that is to bring it down from the head into the body. So the reason why many people are scattered is because all the knowledge is here, but we're missing the Bahashi voice, that you can't learn in school. You can't learn that in the Savarim. You have to actualize that. And the way you do that is a process. The first part of that is what's called safety. We don't feel safe in our bodies. We could elaborate on that if, 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 if Menachem, whatever we want to, but that's to answer the question why we find many people so scattered, even though we know old ideas. Everyone knows when I tell them these ideas. It's not about knowing it. It's about actually feeling it. And actually, just, I guess, yeah. I would just add, um, sometimes learning more can be in a form of an escape. Sure. Because because it's so scary and you feel unsafe, might as well, let's see what he says now. Let's continue learning. Let's see what he says now. But what really what we have to do is close the safer, close your eyes and see what comes up. And sometimes it's scary. It's hard. And that's why people struggle being by themselves and uh, living with that body. It's more knowledge is easier, but emotions be connected to what you're feeling, that can be a struggle. Learning could be an escape because you're staying in your head. And the most trauma is disconnecting from the body. We need some breathing. Body, which learning does a very good job of masking, but that's very deep. I don't know if, uh... We need okay. some breathing. Some breathing. <laughs> did, yeah, that's actually Nishima actually does that. Nishima. But did we do that? Did we answer the question? Yeah. Okay, Rishon, let's go to another live question. Okay, so I was going to ask, but I want to sh share two pictures first, okay? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, here we go. So this is a picture. Shlava, can you see here, Shlava? Um. Yeah. Oh, look at that young this man. This is Rishon Schwartzberg, April 26th of 2021. Is that the 2020? I think 2020. Two and a half years, yeah. 20... yeah two and a half years. This was the year when he came on. Going back to normal, things are not in the norm. Remember that? Yeah, that's crazy times. Crazy times. Crazy times. And I'm going to share now one other picture. We have our in-house meme person. So can you read it out loud? When we look outside, it steals our dreams because all dreams are inside ourselves. Oh, wow. I knew that I'm going to get you know, like... You said it. If I... Says if I, Fleming Schwartzberg. <laughs> wow. He's good. We, 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 have, we have a whole team over here. Okay, our favorite guy, sorry, let's go. Hi, um, I'm enjoying your talk. Um, this is sort of ties in with guilt, but I don't mean necessarily sin or anything, or also the idea of the ideal. Every community seems to have its ideal, whether it's Kolel, uh, you know, Aliyah, Shlichus, you know, Lubavitch, whatever. And what, what, you know, it, for those of us who maybe took time to find our, uh, ourselves to really see what 
triggers us, what resonates. And what if we feel like it's at odds with the communal ideal? Like we realize I'm just not coal L material, uh, material. I'm not, you know, I'm not cut out for a Chabad house. I'm not cut out for this. So there's a certain measure, at least for me, a certain measure of guilt that I can't, you know, like not be able to either measure up or fit in in a certain way. I mean, is that, I even give another example, a friend, unfortunately, a friend of mine who left orthodoxy, um, she was a ballist too, and she said, oh, the only reason I came in was because I was insecure. So sometimes there's this idea of finding yourself, but then realizing that either, you know, again, you, you know, suddenly the, you feel like you don't belong in the community or you don't want to, you know, you don't uh, you have another, you know, being pulled in another direction. How do you reconcile that? You know, the incongruity, perhaps, if that's the right word. Yeah, that's, that's such a great, great question. You really hit like yeah. a, such a on the nail because I'll tell you why I like your question so much. Thank you. Um, we're all full of it when we say about we should be ourselves. <laughs> we, everyone talks about it. Be authentic. Be yourself. You're full of bunk. No one's themselves. No one's authentic. We're all making believe. We're putting on a show. We just swept the garbage into the closet when you came into the house. Look at my beautiful house. When no one's being themselves. Who, who's authentically themselves? Do you wear the clothing that you want to wear? Do you say the things you want to say? No one does that. So how does that, how does that jive well with the concept about being authentic? So I'll explain to you, and it really relates to the question that you're saying. Let's say, imagine right now, I want to talk about the Giants game. And I wanted to talk about, I wanted to pontificate for an hour about how they won and what 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 would they do. I, I don't know, just heard that they won. But imagine I wanted to talk about it. Because that's me. I like sports and I want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I'm authentic. I'm genuine. Hey, let's talk about sports. Would I be able to talk about that for an hour now? No, because why not? Shouldn't I be just authentically myself? Besides being who you are, we have roles to play. And in that role, we um, need to fit in because of the responsibility that we took of being part of that role. So uh, let's say um, you're, uh, you're, you're someone that's uh, taking care of kids. Um, so then you can't just you know curse, even though that's yourself, because you're responsible for the kids. Whatever your role is, that's what you have to do. So what happens is like this, is that the frustration happens when we don't fit into the community because everyone else is doing that. There's actually, there's re I resonate with that because even though I need to be myself and, and 100% be yourself, but at the same time, how do I fit into the community in my role? So yeah, of course we're not all doing whatever we want to do. But simply not because I'm not authentic to who I am, it's a very deep idea and, and, and help me, Menachem, you, we need to unpack this. But, but in my role as father, husband, Rav, therapist, uh, like for example, if I'm a therapist, I can't stop preaching to someone about, by the way, that's halacha says not like that. That's not my role. In that role, I have certain requirements, but I'm not being authentic. I am being authentic, but in that role, I have to be like that. So, so there, are, there are boundaries. There are we, you know, as from Yidin, we for sure have boundaries. Right. And being myself in the boundaries, maybe if I want to wear a green suit, you know, maybe I can do it, but it's not going to work for my, my kids. Or, you know, so there is a balance. But so the question is, you know, you're going to open up the can of worms. You're going to tell me, first find out who you are, what you want to do. And then you're going to tell me, wait a second, but now you can't do it. So how does that work? It's a great question. So I, li I like that question even more, and I'll, and I'll tell you what the answer to that question is. See, when 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 not when I'm not able to be myself, that does not affect my sense of self value, because I know who I am, and I'm not ashamed of that part of me. The fact that this situation requires that I have a dress code. If I go into a restaurant and they make me dress a certain way, it's because I want to eat in that restaurant. 
But that doesn't say that my style or my sense of self is being suppressed. Obviously, we're touching all the hot buttons over here. We can get bar bombarded over here with, with what we're saying right now. But again, conceptually, you have to understand an idea so it doesn't, it doesn't hit anyone emotionally. You just talk about conceptually. You avoid all the defense mechanisms. But your sense of self is intact. The fact that I need to be this is because I want to be here in this situation. So let's say addressing Kaisar's question about um, being in a certain community. Yeah, there's two options. One is maybe this is not the exact place for you. Or you say that, no, how could you say that? Sacrilegious. You say, okay, but if I have to be something else, does that negate my sense of self? Yeah. Or option number three is being myself even though Everyone else is different. So it boils, boils down to um, making choices. If I know what I want, and then if I have to go there, I have to do a certain thing. So I'm choosing to do it the way they want. I'm choosing to do it the way it works for the people around me. Yeah, if I'm, you don't I'm, know about it, then it's suppressed. And you don't yes. know what's bothering yes. you. Oh, you said it's such a deep idea. Now, oh, you remind me of something. And you know, sometimes you have soapboxes you say for a while and you're noticing that everyone you're talking to, you're saying the same thing. I hope people that I speak to don't realize they're going to listen. They're going to get upset at me now. But suddenly you have soapboxes. And one time, a long time ago, this was a very big idea that I was very into that, that when you choose something, it's very different than when this was forced on me. So when someone's stuck in a marriage, again, these are all hot topics. I hope people are not getting like flared up from these, but when you're stuck in a marriage, the word stuck already creates an emotion inside of you. And that's why NLP, neuro linguistic programming is so important. I, I, I'm always noticing people, I say, you, I notice you saying the word should a lot or should not. Can we, can we maybe switch that word to could or would? And, and you see them falling back to the same words again and again. And you notice those people always have a lot of guilt. So, so let we, let's switch the words. So when you say stuck in a marriage, you, you, why, why are you stuck? You could, you could leave the marriage. No, I can't leave. Oh, do you know what would happen? Oh, I mean, so, so what about it? So you want to stay in? No, no, I want to leave. Okay, so leave. You realize what, what, where that's going? You have a choice. You're just doing a pros and cons. You're doing a cost benefit analysis and you're just not willing to, to take the cost. But you're choosing those benefits over those costs. Is that too deep? Menachem, you want to elaborate on that point? It's a very heavy point, very deep point. Yeah, I think, I think we said enough for now, okay. but it's going to come out again. So uh, <laughs> okay. here's an interesting question that let's, let's back up a little bit. Somebody sent in, I learn, I have a shear, Bar Hashem, I'm a from Yid. I feel the help. I feel the help, a lot of uh, a lot of help of my therapists and the self-help books that I read, and uh, it helps them through challenging times. I know in theory, Toyota is the right thing, but it doesn't help me practically with my struggles. He feels like he's getting the help he needs from the therapist and the self-help books. So now, let's understand what's going on. Wow. Okay, so that, that's a great question. This is going to be very controversial. You ready? The way I'm going to understand his question. What do we need Tyra for if we have psychology? If no one had like some heartbeat, irregular heartbeat right now, you're not listening. You have to explain. Yeah. What kind of question is that? Look, like, like the questioner said, I learned many years in yeshiva, never helped me anything. I went to a therapist. I really liked him or her. And they really helped me. And I'm really, really like, you know, doing well. And it helped me with my struggles. So that's, that's, that's very, very disconcerting for a person to come to that awareness. And, and the question that comes up is, in, what do we really need Tyra for? Psychology is the, actually helps and not Tyra. And, and really, the person's asking, on the words of Chazal. Chazal tell us, if someone tells you, someone tells you there's wisdom by the, by the, by the nations, believe them, because there is wisdom, obviously. If there's Torah by the nation, don't believe them. So what does that mean? Well, what does Torah have to offer me, really? Okay, you tell me something I have to do, fine. But, but what is it offering me? Does, is it true that Torah doesn't offer me anything? I just have to do it? So 
shocking as it sounds, psychology cannot fully heal a Jew. I know that's, that's, very, that's going to be very controversial because I am a therapist and many therapists have been on the show. It's very simple. It's not a, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that it leaves out a critical part of ourselves, which psychology does not address. If, if, if like we said, the purpose is to unify everything, psychology by default is gonna leave out one integral part. Now, I know there was someone on the show and I came across this individual just recently, a Jewish professional who he, he introduced to therapy, the soul. And he came up with a spiritual modality for therapy. Now, who are you? I'm not saying it's not helpful, and it is. But who are you to know the language of the soul? And the only thing we know about consciousness is because we've studied it, and even that is very tenuous. But the soul? What barometer do you have to understand what the soul needs? Only Hashem knows. And he said there's only one way to connect with your soul. What is that? How do you connect with your soul? Now, first I want to explain for a moment what makes us disconnect. Someone had already asked this question. All trauma, all unhealthiness is a disconnect. It's a dissociation. You know, what happens is when there's a traumatic event. So it leaves a powerful imprint on our minds and our bodies. We know the, 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 the uh, what's the name, the best of Vandekal. He wrote, the, you know, the, the body keeps the score. And all the trauma is stored inside the body. The brain wants to protect itself from having the pain of that event. So it protects us by, by disconnecting from the body. So it disassociates. You know, sometimes actually people don't remember. Don't remember the traumatic event because they're so disconnected. Or some people actually have people that went through certain types of abuse. Um, they actually, um, they feel things in certain parts of their bodies. But the mind wants to disconnect turns it off. Some people actually see it from like a, like a third person point of view because they're disconnected from their body. So trauma, ra, head there, the way the morale always calls it is disconnect. In our culture, there's one force that causes all the disconnect, right? If all of life is zichu, the zibug is to connect. All, holist, all hol holistic living is, is bringing everything together. All the faculties, all the senses, what is it that creates disconnect? There's a Gemara in Shabbos that's Bafema Beis that quotes a Pasuk that we say every week. We say in the Shir Shal Yem of Wednesday, we say, It shouldn't be in you a foreign God. So the Gemara in Shabbos asks, what's a foreign God in a person's body? So the Gemara says, fascinating, it's the Yetzahara. What does it mean, the Yetzahara? The Yetzahara is the symbolic entity that doesn't let us be who we're supposed to be. Why is he called the foreign God in a person's body? You ever hear someone say, you know, I'm not myself today. You ever hear someone say, I'm not, I'm not myself today. The question is, then who are you? What do you mean you're not yourself today? Then who are you? So Rav Volbi explains in Ali Shur, he says, fascinating. You know what the ills are? You know what the Yitzhar does? He says, It's the power of alienation in the person. In whom Mishnah and if the Yitzhar dominates a person, he becomes foreign to himself. He says, Zarmamish, literally a foreigner. He says, Li regish, without emotion, we have bond, without understanding, we cash, without connection, we have without any love. The first pillar of your world, like we said in the Mishnah Novus and Morale, is being Adamat, is having a relationship with yourself. And the force of evil of the Yitzhar is all about disconnecting this relationship. Not having this relationship. That's all the Yitzhar is trying to do. He's the foreign God in your body. Keeping your body away from your soul. That's the Yitzhar. It's a fascinating idea. When the Yitzhar, Yitzhar, what's the Yitzhar? The Gemara Shabbat tells us, and Ravobi explains it. It's when you're disconnected from this. Okay. What's the remedy for the Yitzhar? You know, there's many modalities now with this. And really, we can give class and classes on this idea. I myself, I'm trained in many somatic uh, healing modalities and you know I tell people as long as there's no avoiders are involved to do things like yoga like practices it's so critical for people to connect with their body but that's not my chiddush what I'm here for tonight I'm sure people will have that question we could go there if people want to I go anywhere if people want to go but the chiddush I want to say here tonight is regarding the soul 
Hashem tells us the answer. If you want to be totally connected, Hashem's the famous Gemara. Berasi Yitzhahara. Hashem says, I created the Yitzhahara. And what's the antidote? Berasi Taira Tavu. There's only one way, not psychology. Taira, Chachma Bagoyim, yes. Psychology helps, of course, no doubt. Has healed many, many, many thousands and thousands, whatever the numbers of Yidin. But Taira, Altamim. And says the Rebbeinu Shalom, the Yitzhahara is what creates the ultimate disconnect. You will never, never get total connection from psychology. Only with Torah. Now, wait a second. I'm sure you want to jump on me. But if this doesn't go viral, what I'm going to say in a moment, then I don't know, maybe all growing people are not on the internet. Because this next idea that I'm going to tell you is something that nobody knows of. And it's an idea that's mind blowing. Okay. But let me first answer with a. Oh, no, I should pause you and say to be continued next week. No, okay. No, no. <laughs> that'll be great. <laughs> oh, that'll be great. Um, no, we go to a commercial break. Let's get, let, let's market some watches or something, you know. But um, so is, imagine a woman called Devorah. And she inherited from her father, her late father, a, a two story apartment in. Uh, in, 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 in Yerushalayim, let's say Meir Shalar. But like it was a chorva, it was a dilapidated building. So she's, she's living in the, in the, she moves in with her family to the first floor. It's decrepit and the, the doors are breaking and everything, whatever. And, and, and she once tried going up to the attic, but it was, it was fajavit. It was like, it, it was jarred clothes and she couldn't get it open. So she forgot who needs Mozart to look in the attic. But then every, every now and then people said, you know, who knows what's in the attic? She said, well, what do I need it for? Mali it's so hard dealing with the first floor. Who needs to go upstairs? Finally, one day they decide they're going to go check it out. And they take like five people till they break open the door. And they realize upstairs, beautiful state-of-the-art apartment, brand new appliances. Everything was furnished. And there was even a deed for a few apartments and there was bank account numbers. And from that, they were able to make the whole apartment over. Now the first floor became like a foyer coming into the upstairs, whatever, they became very well. What's the marshal? A person is made from two parts, an upper story and a lower story. And we tend to live in the basement, inside our body, not connecting to something above us. How does this relate to Tyre? What is the shayrish of Torah? This is, this, this is the mind-blowing part. So if you need to get the snip right here, this is it. All of Lakewood is built on Torah. The whole world is built on Torah. Every god learns Torah all day. The whole Klagistral is Torah. Tell me the shayrish of the word Torah. If you ask people about to translate the word Torah, it's all we do. We learn Torah. Every, we know in Yiddishkeit, everything's in the shame in the name. What is the word Torah? Some people say it's from the word Hayra of a ruling. Rav Shamshim of Paul Hirsch was the king of etymological derivations to show the shirish of the words. When you get the shirish, you're able to understand the greater depth of what it means. Do you know what the shirish of the word Tyre is? It's going to blow you away. You never heard anything like this in your life. It comes from the shirish of hara. Hey, reish, hey. That's the two letter, Rav Hirsch is this, two letters, three letters, is hara. What does hara mean? Pregnancy. Why does Tyra call it pregnancy? That's Tyra? How is that Tyra? Says Rav Hirsch the following words. Listen closely. An inspired brain plants a seed in the body, conceiving a nefesh chaya, a living spirit. Wow. Mind-blowing. I'll say it again. An inspired brain plants a seed in the body, conceiving a nefesh chaya, a living spirit. The tachlis ha'odam is to go into the upper story and draw down the, the Balatanya and the Kuntras Afrin says, Tamatur the learning of Torah in the inner part of a person, he says, is to draw down the intelligence the tachlis is not to stay in the attic. It's to bring down what's in the attic down into your body. 
lick a pregnancy, planting a seed, conceiving a nefesh chaya, and your whole person becomes a lebediga neshama. You know, you have to set, you know, I, I, I give a share on places. I actually recently stopped because I was doing many different things, but it was very hard. Why did I do it? Because I want to see my life through the lens and the prism of a Baal I want to be able to take a second look and say, wait, the end timer. Maybe you're going to say like this. And maybe you're going to say like that. And maybe yes, you can say like that. Because there's a famous quote that says, tell me what your opinions are and I'll tell you what magazine you read. Saturate your brain with divine wisdom. It's the mikvah of the brain. Mikvah is from the word of hope. It's our only hope. Because it's the key to becoming you. We say, when we put on a tefillin, the soul resides in the brain. And when you learn, you know what happens neurobiologically? Your synapses fire, create connections, and it goes through the central nervous system. And your instincts are wired from your nervous system. And that comes from your brain. And guess what tells your brain what to think? Is what you're imbibing. And if you're, in, if you're learning divine wisdom, guess what happens now? You think through the lens of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's Torah. Torah is connecting your brain to your body. But not stop connecting. Connecting it on the divine level of your shamo to your body. And when you act and react, you're acting as a divine soul. And it does exactly what pregnancy does plants a seed, and it grows into something in living spirit. So now in Yeshiva Velt, you'll understand the terminology that you say, your goof has to become like a neshama. What does that mean? That means to say that now your instincts are wired by your brain, which is influenced by God's thoughts. That's what it helps when you learn Shosh and Aga. It's such an amazing idea. When you learn Gemara, now you understand you're wiring your brain. You look through God's rule book and that's how you see reality you don't see it anymore through this primitive way of egocentricity you see it through the lens of god i can't I, I when i first came across this and no one knows this by the way no don't tell anyone about this Rav Hirsch, I'll, I'll lose my whole power of my book it, it, mind blown tyra is everything what is tyra pregnancy you're creating a living spirit in your body your body becomes now kaddish eliyah another goes up to the, the Sadras Hashemaima, because his goof became a neshama, a lebedeg in neshama, that's what happens when you learn Taiwan. So this is, this is spiritual. I mean, saying it practical also, if somebody would say that he learns, but he doesn't see how the learning helps, so you would tell him, you don't have to see it. Or maybe he's doing something wrong. I'm well, explaining so. it to a woman also that's not learning the deep to Gemara also. That's, that's, that's a great question. That's really a whole class in its own self. I'll answer it in short because you asked it. The Gemara asked this question. The Gemara asked, what schus do women have? They don't learn Taira. And we know everything is Taira. So what schus do women have? So it's a well-known Gemara. The Gemara says, that they come back from, from, from where they go to learn and they, um, and they take their children to Beit Nishta to learn in Cheder. They have a portion of their husband and their children. Now, it's not just a portion, actually bigger than that. The women are like the coaches. Coaches are not, they're bigger than the players. The players need to get their women already. It's, it, that's one approach, which is, it's a, it's a whole sheer. I, you, I can elaborate if you really want. But the other approach is really tzniyas. There's a well-known Vilna Goyen that says the equivalent for women of what men is learning Tyra for women are tzniyas. And the reason for that is because the whole point of Tyra is to connect your soul with your body. Women are connected. I, when I see a couple, I tell the guy, shh, 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 listen to your wife. They are the emotional gurus. They are connected naturally. Women are naturally connected. They can lose it. Sneez protects it. The word sneez comes from the word sina, of a shield. It protects them from losing their dignity. Dignity is when you're connected, your soul and your body. Maral says, tell them like is when you're connected. You see a, a big person because they're connected. Their whole body commands respect. A woman demands respect. She's a basmelech. That's what Sneas does. It's the same thing what Tara does. The, woman, the man has to get it, and the, the man has to attain it, and the woman has to maintain it. So that's why it's a whole share. If you ask it, I'll say it. But that's why women don't need to learn Tara. So let's go to a live question for a second, okay? Okay. 
Okay, you're on. Hi. Hi, Hi this is Bonnie Siegel. Um, I have a question about connecting to Torah and oneself and God, Hashem, if somebody is blocked from trauma and or addiction. How does one connect to the Torah if they're blocked from that? Great question. Great question. And that really goes to, I think, what um, what their Menachem was, or she one of you was in the middle of saying this idea about like, um, or it sounded like you were going to say, which is, well, if people learn Tyra, oh yeah, Menachem, you were saying, I think, that if people learn Tyra, well, how, 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 how do you have people that are totally disconnected and they're learning in yeshiva. How's that a possibility, Schwartzberg? You said that Torah connects the highest parts of a person to the lower oh, parts. Of a person. So I'm going to pause you. I'm going to throw the next question because it's all together. You ready? General question somebody sent in. It seems like a huge contradiction. On one hand, we have yeshiva schools, largest I feel me following ever. Everybody listens to Shlomi Schwartzberg. Worldwide Yiddish growth in Torah. On the other hand, it seems like every house in Cloud Israel is suffering from one thing or another. It seems almost out of whack. What are we missing or what are we doing something wrong? Okay. Um, Throwing that in there. Just putting it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's, yeah. It's, but it's, the it's, question that makes me short is, there's so much tyrant there's so many people are learning. There's such a massive of Daf L'chaim, or Rabbi Stefanski, and all the Daf Yemishirim. It's really... She, she was probably bigger than today than there ever were. At the same time, it seems like there's such craziness and such out of whackness today that ain't by shame, but shame by so whatever, however you want to touch it. So what's going on? What are we missing? Right. So let me go to Bonnie's question first and mm -hmm. tie it together with what you're bringing up. What happens is, is that you need to have a receptacle for the light. Anyone knows basic Kabbalah? All of the bad in the world got trapped because what's called Shvira Sakelem. Hashem created the world. And it's not a mistake. This is the way he made it to be. But he specifically made it that there was a very great light. And the vessel was not strong enough to hold the light. So those vessels broke. And those shattered throughout the world. And those fallen pieces have inside of them what's called Nitzaitis HaKadoshim. They have spar holy sparks inside of them. And when we take things from the Klippos, from Klippos Naiga, from, you know, the permitted peels, we're able to pull out, only big tzaddikim could take from the really bad, and then you could pull out those sparks that are there. What that teaches us is that you need to have an appropriate vessel. I was actually teaching Friday night, I was giving it in my shul Friday night, I was talking about making kiddush. You have to have a kais. You can have all the wine in the world. If you don't have a kais, you can't make kiddush. You have to have a, a vessel. If you don't have a vessel, then all the light and all the wine means nothing. If someone has an addiction, as an example, their body is not a vessel to hold the light of the Torah that they're learning. It's not staying inside. Either it's not entering or it's falling through the holes. They don't have an appropriate vessel to hold it. So, you know, it's, it's not by chance that when it says in the Pasig, Chazal say something which you don't see in the Pasik. They add on an extra word, why did you say that? Why did it say that you shouldn't have a foreign God in the body of a person? Because the body is the inferior part in regards to, it's what disconnects us really from the light. Because we really have a neshama. The neshama should really make our body whole and beautiful and pure. But the vessel is not refined. So the reason why we could learn all the tire in the world and be disconnected is because the vessel is not intact. And we need to be able to create a abode, a home, to be able to hold all our assets. If we don't have that, then we won't be able, it won't do anything for us because it's not being contained. We need a container. And, and Menachem, probably you know this well, that all somatic work is creating a container feeling what's inside that container, appreciating that container, making that into a vessel, a receptacle to hold all the light. So you can learn all the turn in the world, but it's like pouring into a cup that has a hole in the bottom and it's pouring out. They, they should first go to therapy. So therapy could definitely be helpful. 
you know, there's a concept called Derech Eretz Kadim Latayra, which one interpretation of that means to say is that you have to first learn to be a mensch before you even come to the Tyra. I mean, you have to be a healthy person. You have to have a healthy uh, body. And of course, medicine teaches us that. Tyra's primary objective is not to teach that. We go to the doctors for that. And therapy could do that for a person to heal that addiction that they have. So if therapy is going to do it for the person, most definitely create a body that could hold all that the person has, including his intelligence, including his soul. Did that answer the question? I mean, there's yeah. obviously a lot more to say. So it could be many people. So it could be many people have an addiction, not aware of the addiction, and that they need to heal before the Torah is going to have any... Yeah, it says in Ein Das Ein Chachm. Das, we always know, means connection. The whole purpose of the world is the Laman Das. It's always, let me say, we say by uh, uh, everyone gets excited, Simchas Tayyar, the highest after all the whole Yedach Yisan. And we say, what do we say? We say, Lashon of Atesla Das. Kashem Ulikim Inim Ovad. It's the same Pasik, it's all the same thing. It's connection. If you don't have Das, that's why it says the terminology of intimacy is yada. To know you is to love you. A lot to talk about that, but it's, it, it refers to intimacy, which is connection. Yada is chav ishtoy. You can't have you can have all the chach in the world. It's not going to get you anywhere because you don't have das to connect. The das is is the neck kabbalistic. It's what connects. And that's why Mitzrayim. Sorry, okay, I'm going to get off here on the whole machshav. Let I me. Mean, you didn't answer the question. Though my question was why? Oh. Why? I, yeah, well, repeat the yeah. question and then get into the answer. Don't, don't mind repeating yeah, the question. So you wanted to know regarding in general, in the world of Yiddishkeit, we have so much growth, we have so much Taira, and then you have Kala Yisrael, you have so much that's out of whack. Yeah? Are, are we missing something? Are we doing something wrong? How is it possible? We have so much Taira, like we had one woman questioner asked, everyone's so harried and we have so many Tsars. What's the what's the shot of that? So what I think that could be is that and this really comes back to like someone asked related to like what we teach our kids. Our communities cra crafted an incredible framework. We have, we have great schools, we have great communities, we have so much infrastructure. And I can't say why we have tsars. I'm not on that level, but I could talk about what we could do to prevent them. You know, one of the greatest Kiev tools ever invented was not the great lectures, the philosophical proofs. Anyone who's involved in Kiev knows this fact that it's the Shabbos table. The Shabbos table was makar more people than anything else. Why? Because it's all about relationships. And, and people are craving connectivity to be connected and we're missing that in a big way. From selfies, which is all about egocentrism, or social media, which is image over authenticity. You know, there's a, there's a, a, a Rav Nachman says, this, the Nanavi says, he says, he says, simply means to say that I was amongst the exiles. Says Rav Nachman, no, wow. Va'ani, and Va'ani was betoich ha'goyla. The me was exiled. There was no me. You see Shlemy Schwartzberg, oh, he has this title, this, this title. He's, he's a, you know, some people are what's called eviscerated. You know, uh, many years ago, the, the, the Jewish Observer put out a, 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 I think it was a cover page article called the empty shell syndrome. What's the empty shell syndrome? You have someone who looks mamish like everybody else in the development, but inside he's empty. He's a robot. He has, he's like a body without a soul. He's what's called binyan without zriya. We do a lot of building. We don't do enough organic. We don't allow people to flourish. So what we might be doing wrong, again, I'm not here on that level to say what we're doing wrong, but it's like, although we have all this Tyra related to, to that, what well, the question that we just was asked before, not enough of the organic or organic part about people allowing themselves to be who they need to be. That's why there's so much disconnect and people moving and leaving and this and, and going away because of that lack of connectivity, which all the time, like we said, is not related to that other person's question. It's not going to help because I, I can't receive it because I don't have that internal emotional connection. So let me, I'm going to push you. Uh, what's What's that first step oh, that wow. a person should do, practical, to get on the path of healing? Okay, so so great question. Um, I'm going to go back to a word we mentioned before. 
Kalal Yisrael is called Badon Yashiv. Kalal Yisrael is the nation that sits alone. A great technique to do is Badat, is Baidadis. Now, what do you do when you're Isbaid? When you're Isbaid, you're alone. When you're alone, you know, when you have a, a, a couple that's spending time, they want to be alone. They don't want to be with their kids. They don't want to be with family members. They don't want to be with other, they just want to be alone. Why, why do they want to be alone? Because there's something called the law of proxemics. The law of proxemics is, and this is one of the reasons why we have to be very careful at the workplace with you know, men and women, because by default, if you spend enough time with someone, even just in their perimeter, it actually creates fond feelings. Interesting. Just, you know, like when you're on a plane and you get stuck somewhere and then like, oh, you have to spend Shabbos in, 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 in some, you know, uh, w- w- Wisconsin or something, whatever, in some, you know, shli- the Chabad Shliach's house. And then after Shabbos, you guys are close and you keep up. What's the pshat? Because you spend close contact with that person. Even if you were just like sitting near each other on the bus, for like an eight hour trip, you suddenly become, you feel close to the person. It's a law of proxemics. Now, I remember when I was dating, my mother told me that, how do you know she's the right one? I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying this as dating advice. I do a lot of dating coaching, but this is not, this is not the necessarily for everyone, but it's a good, you say, you know, you know, it's a good basic act of girl. It's sometimes hard, you know, they're all good. They're all, and they are. They're all, you know, they're all amazing. How do you know she's the one for you? And a lot of people struggle with this. I don't know, she's a good girl, but. How do I know she's the one? So the way my mother told to me is, if you're sitting in the car, no one's saying anything. Now, mind you, a teenager would say, that is awkward silence. And it's like, uh, you got to talk to make sure there's no, you know, no downtime. If you're being quiet, and it's not only not awkward silence, it's actually beautifully delicious and mural yes i felt that with you dating so i actually it was my anniversary not so a few days ago so you know happy anniversary to mural uh it wouldn't be anything without you um and that's the whole shmuz about the woman what she does for the man i don't want to get off on that but how am i myself with our is this your anniversary huh? doing january 12th january 12th the coach is the shirt tonight your oh. anniversary. yeah yeah mask him so, um, so, so, so by just spending time, not saying anything, just being in the presence of yourself creates close feelings. Based on the law of proxemics, if you do his body, just don't say anything. Just be with your body. I actually do something. I'll share a practice that I do. I haven't done in a long time. But when I was very exhausted, I had a period of time, I was very exhausted. And I had to take a, a power nap during the, during like, uh, I don't know, four o'clock, whatever time it was. I would lay down and I would talk, not literally talking because I was resting, I was laying down. But I would, inside myself, in my thoughts, I would talk to my body and I would say, wow, you know, you're really amazing. You do so much. We do, we do so much together, me and you. And without you, I'd be gone. And I know, trust me, I know I, I know I, I really work you really hard. I just want to spend a few moments with you right now. And then afterwards, you know, we'll get back up and do it. I just want to spend some quality time with you. And I would feel my body vibrating, saying, yes, yes, thank you. I sound, now I sound totally retarded. And I was like, okay, he's a cool, he's a fool gig. Get him out of here. But Menachem, okay. Menachem, did we vet him beforehand? Did anybody check in with him? <laughs> It's God is God is God is affirmation. It sounds somatic. Yeah. So so it's it's very very healing for the body to 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 and validate it, to 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 get appreciated and just connect with it. It's like when you go with your wife on a few a two day vacation to Florida to Deerfield Beach, and uh, you know just that spending time is rejuvenates you. That's what our body needs. That's connecting, and there's so many ways. I mean, there's the havening techniques and we can go on and on with somatic experiences. But that I would say would be a very, very good first place to start is his body, is, is, is Levado, 
is by yourself. And don't don't bring Hashem and don't bring, I don't mean in that way. It's Hashem's inside you. It's the Arpanimi. Okay, I don't want to get complicated, but. I want to, I want to pause you for a second. I want to go to the next live question. I think yeah. it ties. Yeah. Okay, the next live question, you're on. Thank you for uh, listening to the question. We really appreciate everything you're saying. I, I think my question is a little bit what you just, coming off what you just said maybe, but how do we bring the Kaira that you spoke about earlier and make it part of ourself? I'll, I'll just give you an example, like what I'm going through now. Like I'm trying to work now on, like, on my Betachem, like Parnassa and what, you know, and, and I'm trying, I'm learning some Sfarim Betachem. And when I'm learning it, it all, you know, it makes sense. But then I close the Safer and it just, it's, it's not coming in me. And I'll, I'll find myself going back like what Menachem, I think, said earlier, like reading it again as an escape, because when I'm reading it, it makes sense. But like when I'm two hours later, when I'm thinking about it, it's just I don't feel it's becoming part of me. Great question. Great question. So I, you, you know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of um, when someone tells me something that my family needs to know. Meaning that, you know, let's say we're having a guest for Shabbos and they're going to text me. I right away forward the text to my wife. Why? Because I might know, but my wife will have no clue. Like, you invited someone? Oh, yeah, Taka. We invited someone. Okay, I, I didn't know that, right? So what happens is like this. When our brain learns this idea many many people and this is this is something that we have to learn see people take it as a shame as a guilt it's not a shame as a guilt it's 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 this the, the pundavich Rav was famous for saying the quote when man landed on the moon he heard about it and he says oh wow man could go so far and land on the moon but to take it from his thoughts to his heart that he can't do it which is it is a it's a very good day it's a it's a really difficult avoid but what happens is when you learn this savor of the moon of it goes into your brain, but we don't bring it down into the body. So what does that mean? Why is it not entering into the body? Because that's where Mitzrayim comes in. Mitzrayim, these the constraints. Before the Chet of Adam Rishon, I once heard from my Rebbe of Sacha Rothschild, he said that there was no neck. That's what's called the Adam's apple. This is called by the neck Adam's apple because Adam's apple is what made the neck. Or the other name. But the point is that the neck is a, is a, is a, is a narrowing. It's a, it's a bottleneck. And it, it constraints, and that's what Mitzrayim is the word Mitzar of the narrowing, and it doesn't let your thoughts come down to your body. What you need to do is you actually have to draw it down. What does that mean? It means to say you have to create this relationship of the body and the soul. So it's not enough just to learn it. So maybe like his like this, maybe of having your body as a vessel, as a receptacle, as connected to your brain so that it doesn't just stay up here and it comes down over here. Now, there's many different ways. Another one is called motion. When you actually, that's why a lot of, a lot of healing modalities use motion. And because the, the, the language of the soul is movement. It says, a, a, a Torah is like, a, is like a candle, which flickers, always flickering. You have movement. So when you act on it, it actually helps. That's why So you can't just learn it. You have to actually put it into practice. You have to make it into an action. You have to actually actualize it. So just learning it is not going to necessarily be enough. And that's why it's going to get stuck. If we go ahead and we purify the body and make it an equal partner, then they're going to be sharing bank accounts. But many people go to one bank account and has nothing to do with the spouse. It has to be a shared bank account. That's more metaphorical. But in practice, it means to say that your body has to be connected to your soul. That answer the question. People want to know more specific how to actually yeah, how, how to do that. How, how, how yeah. to yeah, how, how, right. how to so, so it's really so it's really the self-project, which means to say that people don't realize that one of the biggest advice is creating this relationship. You have to understand that your body is a part of you too. So in other words, if, if let's say the rest of your life is not present, it's only when you learn, when you close the safer, then you're not really connected to your learning. That means to say that it's only going to part of you. It's not going to the other part of you. When the person learns, for example, even Nefsha Chaim says, you could learn Musr when you're middle of learning. It's not Bitzel Tari because it's preparing the vessel. 
you have to, the ultimate purpose of learning is lishma. It means to say it's a mindset. It, 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 it's, it's, I'm making myself vulnerable to these ideas. It's, it's, you can't just learn for the ideas. You have like, whether it be visualizing it, um, actually practicing it. So let's say learning Mundi What we, Could you give an example of what a, a type of a Mundi you want to work on? Um, let's say I, well, I, I'm trying, I, I keep on thinking, let's say like, how am I going to support myself in three years? Like everything's going up in price. I'm, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to think back, like last year I was able to support myself five years ago, they would support myself, but it, it's, it's, it, it keeps on coming back. Like, okay, but you know, everything's going up in price in two years from now, I might not be able to support my family. So I'm trying to you know, based on Batachin, trust that I'm going to have whatever I need. But it's just, you know, it's... Right, so what, I, heard, so it's, what, what, it's I, what I would tell you is, like I think the way Menachem said it, you don't have to learn more Chavis Avavos. You close the Sefer and you sit with those ideas. Just sit with the idea about how much you make, family you need to feed, your Shem runs the world and sit there with your eyes closed, the safer closed, and experience your emotions. See what comes up. Notice what those emotions are. And then see what happens after that. But let those emotions be there. Problem is we run from our emotions. <laughs> so it never gets to the body. It, it, we cut we cut it off with like Asaph, the heads in the in the in the it, with all the office buried in Mars and Bela, but the body's not in there. Sit with it, close the safer, sit with that idea and feel your feelings. Menach, you want to elaborate? I mean, it's a great question. First, I'm saying first he has to realize that the first step he has already, which many people are learning tonight is he has that already. He's aware that he's learned one thing and he feels something else. So that step is the most important step to realize that what's in our head is not in our body. Right. So that's amazing. So you have step number one. Now the question is, what do I do with it? So like we heard um, before, Shlemy said, you know, you can talk. You actually could talk to you to those feelings and say, what are you worried about? Good, good. You're not going to say it very good. I want, I want to jump on what you're saying. It has to be a dialogue, an inner dialogue. Make these two parts have a conversation. Yeah, you're saying good, Menachem. I want the fears to talk to your Nisham and say, but, but what's going to be? What are we going to do? Three years from that price are going up. Who knows? And let your Nisham talk. What's he going to say? Let it evolve. Don't worry. Just listen for the nasham. He'll talk. If he's invited. Right. And listen, listen to those screamings because many suppress those feelings. Let it throw the tantrum. It's like uh, it's not, you're not going to be able to. Wow, I hear you're really, really worried. It's like listening to your child or that inner child. <laughs> exactly. That's really what the point of tonight's discussion was to show how it's all. Uh, it, it, the, the, the macro is a reflection of the micro. The relationships on the outside, Echa, is a reflection of Kamaicha, what's going on inside of yourself. That's the, I call it BYOBF, be your own best friend. You have to have your own relationship with the self. That inner dialogue is critical, critical. Yeah, very good, good question. Good answer, also. Okay, Shlaimi, we have a lot more questions, but I don't have all night, so I'm going to try to cover a few more, and then we can put a close. No, seriously, we could, it's, 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 tonight's share is so deep. So, so deep. Okay, um, let me try to knock a few out, and then uh, we'll go to closing. Okay, Shlaimi? Yeah. Okay, question came in. How could I be okay and happy with myself and feel content when inside I feel like I'm failed? I'm not making the money I need, my kids are struggling, and I have nothing to show for myself. How can I feel good and connected with myself when Lamaisa the results are not good? Not that I'm nervous about what the results will be. Lamaisa the results already are not good. Lamaisa, I'm a failure. Lamaisa, I'm a failure. Okay, good question. 
And the answer I'm going to say might seem too deep for this question, but it's only because we fail to see the depth of our life situations. One of the one of the inventions of the Musa movement was to show how deep and, and, and it's incredible. Whenever I learn the Musa Sefer, I, I, I'm blown away by the depth, by the nuance of everything that you can go on and on with that. I want to I want to want to develop this, and you'll see. I want to I want to talk about a, a point that the questioner is saying. There's something called the knowing eye. What's the knowing eye? The knowing eye is if you notice the person is talking about himself. How could I be okay with myself? Do you notice who's talking about who? I about myself. When inside I feel like I failed. What do you mean? I feel like I failed. Who's I about I? Who's talking about who? It's called the knowing eye. And I want you to notice that the questioner is talking about himself judgmentally. And it actually segues very well what we just spoke about a second ago. You have to have a, have a healthy relationship with yourself. And the objective is to connect these two. And Taira is from your soul to your body, what's called Chaya Oilam. And Tefillah is from your body to your soul, called Chaya Shah. I'm not going to get involved in that. But I don't, okay, I don't know how much I should get into this, but I, I, I want to say basically that this judgmentalness that this person has about himself is. I just wanted to highlight that, that there's a judgment here. And judgment comes because you're expecting something, a success. Now, there's one day a week that we're like this guy who asked this question or this woman, whoever it was, that we also are a failure. It's called Shabbos. You know, six days a week, we're called a human doing. Only Shabbos were a human being. Other before the Chet, what did he do? He was just being. All Malachas, Lamatas Malachas, are always that we do proactive, productive activity in this world. All success. Shabbos, we do nothing. We're a failure. We're just being. What do we do then? I'm a failure. No, just be who you are. You know, the piece Etzin says something fascinating. He says that you can learn a lot about your soul from a child. He says a child is not intentional. He just reveals his soul in many different ways. And he, he acts primal, whatever is coming up from his soul. And the child is very authentic. And the child doesn't do anything. That's how we have to be, says the peace of the Rebbe. He says, we just have to be who we are. And the whole tachlis of is to be. When we feel shame or guilt because we are a failure, we're missing the point about life. Your objective is like the Mishnah says, in Abbas, your job is not to finish anything. You have to show up in your life. And therefore, tshuva means just to come back who you are. Just be yourself. So, the answer I'm giving is a little bit of a heavy answer, but I'm showing how the question is really mistaken. The questioner is assuming, he's presuming that we're going to hear his question and say, Taka loser. What do you do with a loser? How do you give self esteem to a loser? You tell him you find one good thing about it? You could do that. But you could really get to the truth, and it has nothing to do with anything of the results of what you're doing because we don't control it anyway. Just be who you are. Just show up to your life. I know it's a heavy idea. Whatever we can go with, whatever. I know we're probably like out of time. So whatever it is, it's a heavy question, heavy answer. Okay, I'm going to squeeze in one more and then we're going to go to the closing part, okay? Okay. Okay, last question before we go to closing. You have to always end it off with, with, with the easy ones. Okay. My wife always wants to have deeper conversations and talk things out. I'm not into these like DMCs. And honestly, it triggers me as well. Is it okay to tell her I don't like these kinds of conversations? So in a very simplistic answer, I would say not only it's not a problem, to the contrary, you need to be assertive. You really need to talk things out. Generally, one of the biggest problems in relationships are that we fail to properly communicate. So if, if you're not into it and it triggers you, Sure, have a conversation. But I want to point something out. 
oftentimes what happens is what bothers us is not the DMC or how our wives speak. We're looking at a mirror when we speak with our wives. Rav Nachman says a Torah that most people don't even know of. It's in Hoy Safras, in the back of Lakut Emiran. He says, you know, you ever have this with your wife? She says, look me in the eye. Look me in the eye. <laughs> Why does she say that? Why does it look me in the eye? Very scary. Most men can't do that, by the way. You really want to get them. Says Rav Nachman, The eyes are like a mirror. Whoever is facing them sees their own reflection. The woman says, look me in the eye because she wants him to see himself in her eyes. There's so much depth in this. I, I don't want to get into this. But all of neuroscience knows about what's called mirror neurons. That what we see in the other person's eyes is actually what wires healthy relationships. But the point of this is, is that when you're getting annoyed from the DMC, it's not about her or the DMC. It's what it's bringing up from inside of you. The Baal Shem Tov says a fascinating pshat in the well-known halacha. Not well-known, but any kid who learns by Yikra. It's halacha that says like this. Kol ha negoim sh'od meroye a koyin or whatever it is. The chacham could see any nega to evaluate if it's a nega or not. Chutz minigay atzmai, except for his own negoim. Says, says the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. He says, read it differently. And a lot of Hasidic Torah is putting the comma somewhere else. Call Hanagoyim Shodim Roya, any nega, any bad, any affliction that you see chutz outside of yourself is Minige Atzmai. It's from his own affliction. That world out there is a projection, literally like a projectile that projects like a screen, and it's from this one little that film that it's projecting. You're the Oilam Katan because you reflect on the Oilam Gadol. When you're getting annoyed at your wife, at the DMC, take a second look at yourself. Go inside yourself and realize that it might be about you. Because one of my bread and butter that I do with people is the emotional intelligence of going inside. Don't look outside. Go inside and stop and say, wait a second, what am I feeling right now? Oh, I'm feeling attacked. Well, wait a second. Did I do anything wrong? No, this always happens. So why is my wife screaming at me? Well, maybe she had a hard day. Oh, okay, fine. And then you actually could be empathetic because you're not being defensive. I just said a huge idea and I did it like Kalach Yad. But the main idea I was answering for this question was, is that go inside. And maybe it's about you, what you're projecting onto her. When you actually are able to heal that part of yourself, you're actually going to love the DMC that you have with your wife. <laughs> so just to answer that question. Okay. Shlomo, Rav Nachman, let's go to closing. Rav Shlomo, you have a few minutes. Think of the closing. Remember, I told you after a great share like this, it's going to come to you. So give it a few minutes. A different chizik, a story, something. Let's 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 start roll, wrapping it up over here. Okay. So first of all, a great share, Shlomo Schwartzberg over here for coming on on January 15th, Tuesday night. Shlomo is, again, I said, one of the one of the pillars of Coach Menachem. Very close friend of, of, of me and uh, of Menachem used to be our neighbors, and Shkreif uh, for coming on tonight. Shir was so so deep on so many levels. Um, I think I have to listen to it a few times. And Shlomo, you, you did it. You you you, you played basically what you did is you made it that you have to come back again. So we have a stickle problem now. <laughs> Figure out what we do. But uh, the waiting list is way too long. I remember how I said a good word. Lamaisa says, "Keep keep in shigat shuv in a chayzal magad." Once you do gazak the word, you can't come back. But Lamaisa. You didn't give the aid so clear, so you're gonna have to come back. You're gonna have to get yeah. more. Yeah, if it's take the deeper, maybe. Uh... Day deeper, exactly. I paused you. Again, tonight she was gonna We should be appreciated Hashem 128. Tonight she should be a big schos from Nachum Shrer, Moshe Ben David Yehuda. All the hundreds of people that were here tonight, the thousands, and thousands of people that will listen to the share. If anybody wants to join the WhatsApp chats or they get the flyer week, what's happening at 848? 525-0066. Say by number. I'll send you the flyer every Sunday. If you want to sign up for the weekly emails and the flyers of who's coming on and the replays, go to menachemberenfeld.com. We can sign up to be part of the email list. Again, for anybody who's here the first time, every Sunday night at 9.30 on the Zoom ID, we have tremendous shiram, tremendous topics. Please spread the word. Let people know about it. Be one of our ambassadors of spreading the emails, throwing them around, sending it, put on their status so people know about it. Again, I say not every share. It's for everybody. 
but you never know who could see it and he could help people with it. It's tremendous, tremendous chizik. I have I, I, Menachem, we have to write a book of the stories that uh, that come out of this year. Again, um, let me give you a little bit of the lineup. Metashem next week, um, January 22nd, we have Rabbi Daniel Kalish from Waterbury, Connecticut. As one, I, I don't know what the title is. Rabbi Kalish was an Irish Israel. Metashem is coming back. And uh, whenever Kalish comes on, it's highly, Rabbi, Rabbi Kalish is, is really a Malach Ligim. So uh, please try to come on. It's going to be unbelievable. The following Sunday after that is Rabbi David Goldwasser, followed by Rabbi Manus Friedman. We have like a huge lineup coming up. So please join, be part of it. And hope to see you guys every Sunday night where we always are. Again, um, see you next week. Should be powerful. Everything is recorded. My channel will be menachemberfall.com. If anyone has any questions or anything, please email coachmenachem at gmail.com. Tonight's share, share 128. It's also recorded. It could be on our, we have our own phone lines. People like to call up, listen to one on the phone. Besides Spotify and Apple and all the different places that it goes on, Kalushin, there's also a phone number 848 777 GROW, G R O W. And uh, if anybody has any questions from Shlomi Schwartzberg, Shlomi, you want to give out to your contact or should they just email Coach Menachem? Up you to can you. The, the email the self project class at gmail.com is a uh, is a good avenue. And okay. is, uh, let them go. There. You want yeah. to just repeat that email address one more time? The T H E self project class at gmail.com. There's stuff on Tor anytime. Just check the self project okay. the class on over there. Again, all the advertising sponsors of Lakewood Scoop, Ellen Ariel from Five Town Central, Chayla Kaf from Shulsam and JCN. Shleimah tonight was Le'ela Le'ela. Tonight was like as deep as it goes. It was almost a root canal tonight, almost. My teeth are hurting. And uh, Coach Menachem, let's give closing. And then we're going to give it to you, Shleimah. Please leave the Olam with strong, strong, powerful words. Okay, Menachem. Yeah. Yeah, Shkoyach Schwartzberg. And yes, it was deep because we were, we were slowly learning how to go inside. And um, it's not easy. We, d- we did not even get to the, to the whole topic of triggers and seeing what, what really comes up. And there's so much deeper. And we have to do some role play, Mitzvah Shem, one day to see what's really going on. But, but, the, but I think we got the idea. And I do want to mention that it's hard for people who have never done it before to sit quietly and, and, and have a dialogue to talk to themselves is not so easy. So they should start with 10 seconds and slowly build up. And journaling could help. You, you listen to your thoughts, write them down, even though you don't know what to do with it yet. But first become aware there's something inside of you talking. It's worried, it doesn't wanna do it. Why not? But I know logically I could, so why am I not? Beautiful. So you become aware of that dialogue. So that's. That's the, the beginning, that's the basic. I do want to mention that uh, Volba, his Talmud, his Talmud writes that he used to send his Talmudim at night to go for walks. And uh, there was one Talmud that, that was scared to go. He asked him what he's scared of. He says, not, not from, you know, Ganovim or maybe from animals. He said, no, so basically what came out was he was scared of meeting that person inside of him to go for a walk at night all by yourself, without your cell phone. And just being there, being yourself is, is very hard, but the only way to do it is to actually push through. And Amit Sashem, that's this is the beginning, the beginning of healing, the beginning of growing. And like we heard, we're talking about Chinach, Shalom Bayes, Avod Hashem. Start looking inside, what's going on, where am I, how am I feeling, why does it bother me? And slowly we can move out. The more we can move in, slowly we can grow. So it was it was Mamasha Gishmak to to be together with you again. Yes, I'm actually as you as you said something, you made me think of a poem that I that I composed a short while ago. I mentioned it in passing before. I'm going to read the poem. Beautiful. I look at people who look like me and you, young and old, ladies and men, no matter where, no matter when. On the surface, they seem to have it all. If life were a movie, they have a leading role. But I am someone who doesn't just see what's open and available for you and me. I am invited, whether consciously or not, to see what's inside every part of them, down to their inner tat. The stories they tell knocks, knocks down their facade in one swoop fell. From the brains and the beauty they so proudly display, to the pain and the trauma that washes all that glitz away. 
That might seem horrible to you, I know, that what you see is one big show, and that, oh, how sad is their plight, that from their true selves they are in flight. However, there's something more dramatic you don't see that changes everything immediately. What's underneath all this rubble and decay is more precious than any money can ever pay. If you allow me to show you that little girl who stands all alone amongst the ruins, after we have weathered the demolition of the house of cards, you will see your youthful dreams she so faithfully guards. And don't pity those brave, courageous souls who, make, who take responsibility and open their mind, to bear their chest and open their hearts, that when their storytelling is done, a beautiful little girl is what they find. Wow. Beautiful. That really says it all, that we have these facade, we have these buildings, we show everyone, look at me, look what I have. And that comes crumbling down because it cannot, it cannot withstand the pressures that are there reverberating in our lives. And let that come crumbling down because that little child who's there is the precious soul that we have inside of ourselves. And the, the reason why I called this class the secret key is based on the Gemara and Shabbos of Laman Alf. The Gemara says that just imagine you want to get into a, a, a palace and there's a, a, a yard and there's a house and there's a key to the outer yard and there's a key to the house. Yerushimayim is the key to the outer yard and Taira is the key to the inside. Taira is the key to becoming you. And when you have the key of Taira, it allows you to become authentic because when we follow the divine wisdom, when we are saturating our brain with divine wisdom, we don't have to become anything or anyone else that the world is telling us to do or to be. Chazal was always telling us to be yourself. The famous mission of us, Ezeu Asher, Ezeu Chacham, the Maral says, he goes through each one and shows you these things in the secular world are all subjective. Who's wealthy? You're wealthy because you're, you're in your development, you have more. But what's in the city, in the state? You know, who, no one's wealthy. Only Jeff Bezos. Everyone else is poor. And no one's, he's the only wealthy. And who's, who's strong? Well, because in your class, you could beat up the kid that's like, you know, puny, but, but when the fifth grade is going to beat you up. All the things, who, who's popular? Are you popular because you're on this show? You, you don't have the billion in the millions of followers that someone else has. So what, what makes you? And Chazal goes to each one of them to show it's intrinsic. When you have Taira, it's all inside of yourself. And therefore, everything else, when you're dealing with your spouse, when you're dealing with your children, you're dealing with Hashem. We didn't go through the specifics. Obviously, we can't be here all night. But when you become yourself, then you're able to have, like, like the Baal Shem Tov says, atem you have to be atem before you're dovey. You have to have a rotsin first to be battle return. So people go, bittle, bittle, bittle. If you're going to battle yourself, read the words of the Mishnah, battle return, you have to have a rotsin. You have to become, say, what's special about Shlemy Schwartzberg? What are you, what stands out for you? Are you intelligent? You know, people tell me before the show, they said, you got to be funny, you got to be entertaining. You know, sometimes I could do that. It's a rub. I say stories. I say jokes. You got to be entertaining. So what I should do because I'm still, what do I want to do? Like, I'm going to be Shlemish Westbury. I know I have certain ideas that are mind-blowing. I'm going to be Shlemish. I'm going to be authentic. And that's what we have to be. And everything else are concentric circles. Being you, then you can connect with everyone and everything beyond that. So don't forget this lesson. Yes, buy the self-project book when it comes out. Follow the classes. Email the selfprojectclass.com. I'm looking for people that are going to help me somehow figure this out because in Chavish Mata Atzma Beis Asurim, I have to say one final idea. I'll end with that. Uh, uh, I can't go so long. But people come to me as a therapist and they want me to help them in a way of like, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Gnuk Shine with all this reflecting business. You know, and, and the truth is, it's, uh, you know, I saw my good Chava, I saw so was entering, I don't know if he's here, but he's a big believer in helping people. Uh, let me explain to you a Pasuk in Mishle that every therapist has to learn this Pasuk. This is very powerful. People come to therapy, they don't know what they're getting into. And the truth is, how could they know? And the truth is, every person is different. You have to meet them where they're at. Mayim Amukim 
our deep waters, our Eitzah Balevish, is counsel in the person's heart. Everyone has the answer deep inside of themselves. The Ish Teruna is Yedlena, a man of intelligence. Teruna is always deriving something from something else, will help draw it out. A good therapist doesn't tell you what to do. They're able to draw it out of you. You have it inside of yourself already. Don't look outside. Dig deep inside yourself. You have the answer inside. You don't need to ask all the great sages, all the great chachamim, nevainim, what do I do with my kids? Rachel b'chaktana. Ramat Asil Salman says in his book on Chinech, we don't have training manuals for parents because you have the answers inside of yourself. Listen to your gut, to your intuition. Gut is in your body. Most of our neurobiology is actually from our gut. And that's the connection of body and mind. That's the whole network. I'm not going to get into the whole thing. But listen to your body. Listen to yourself. Connect to yourself. And you'll be authentic. You'll be who you need to be. And then you'll be able to have a relationship with your spouse, with your kids. To learn this lesson of Torah, ben Adam la'atzmai says Maral, you need to be you, and then you can. Don't blame it on Shalom Bayis. Don't blame it on Chenech Abanim. Of course, these are issues, but first, be yourself, and you'll see everything will shift dramatically. Amen. We love you. Okay, I love you too. Daniel, Kalos, let's get ready. Good night, everybody. Don't be late. Take care. Thank you.